Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo, and I'm your host, and I'm going to be taking you guys through another fan casting summit. Today we're going to be doing the fifth installment, which is DCEU, Batman Rogues. So get ready for this one. This one's going to be awesome. We've got 30 of the greatest fan casters from Instagram, YouTube, coming together to bring you guys the most wanted actors to play the DCEU Batman Rogues Gallery. This is going to be awesome. If you guys are a fan of Batman or DC, you guys must stick around for this one. Get your popcorn, get your seats ready, get your drinks, prepare yourselves, maybe use the restroom, pause this video, and come right on back so that you guys can be ready for the fan casting summit. Again, this is a video that's only going to be here on YouTube, so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss any more of these fan casting summits or fan casting singles that I do on this channel. So hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Today we're doing the fan casting summit number five, the DCEU Batman Rogues. Check it out. This is the order of presentation. So if you want to skip ahead, this is the order so that you can come back and refer to this. I'll have timestamps in the description of the video below. Everyone that is going to be in this video that has participated, cast their votes for who they want to play the Batman Rogues gallery. That'll be there as a resource for you in case you just want to check out and support your favorite fan caster. Let's not waste too much more time. Let's get into it. First up on the Fan Casting Summit, we have Nave Wave 88. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. First up, we have for Harvey Bullock, GCPD detective. We have actor number one is Bill Burr, the comedian from Breaking Bad and Date Night. We also have Vince Vaughn, Brawl and Cellbox 99, and Delivery Man. Frankly, Brawl and Cellbox 99 has proven to most people who have seen it that Vince Vaughn is not just a comedic actor, but he's got serious acting chops. And I think that he is probably one of the most uh, best cut out for this role um, actors out there. I really like Vince Vaughn for this. I think he's a personal favorite of mine. But however, I do respect Bill Burr as this because Harvey Bullock is supposed to be that jaded, cynical um, police officer that is not afraid to cut corners or um, be a little rough around the edges. Bill Burr totally has that in his wheelhouse. So. I'm totally okay with either of these guys being in it. Both of these are a win for me. If I had to choose one, I'm going with Vince Vaughn. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, for Selena Kyle, Catwoman, we have actress number one, Isaac Gonzalez, Alita Battle Angel, Baby Driver, and we also have Rebecca Ferguson from Mission Impossible Fallout and The Greatest Showman. I really like Rebecca Ferguson, but I'm definitely going to have to go with Isaac Gonzalez for this one, not only just on acting, but specifically on her looks. Both of these ladies have great talent. I think Isaac Gonzalez is cut out for the role physically. So that's my vote there. Now for Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, we have Olivia, <laughs> Olivia Wilde from The House and The OC and Jessica Chastain from Miss Sloan, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Ooh, this is good. Um, if I had to choose between the two of these, as much as I like Jessica Chastain, I think I'm gonna go with Olivia Wilde. Yes, I am. I'm gonna go with Olivia Wilde. I think her, her eyes are just very like captivating and mesmerizing and that's part of poison ivy's mystique is that she's alluring she draws men in and then she is their ultimate doom so let's keep moving next up we have dr jonathan crane scarecrow we have first bill skarsgård from it and uh, deadpool 2 and we also have jackie earl haley from robocop and watchmen both these guys are known for playing total and utter creeps and like freaky characters. I think both of these guys are great. On the on the basis that I want an older actor to play Scarecrow, someone that is a little bit more experienced, a little more seasoned, and maybe a little bit more fearful, I'm gonna go with Jackie Earl Haley. I think that's a great choice. Both these guys could do it, but hey, I'm gonna go with the older actor on this one. All right, next up, we've got Oswald Cobblepot Penguin. We have Nick Frost from Into the Badlands and Shaun of the Dead. We also have Danny DeVito who played the penguin already in batman returns in 1992 that's 26 years ago as of the making of this video and dumbo who is it's going to be coming out later this year i'm really uh i, I was really a fan of danny devito's penguin i really like that he he nailed that role in a very creepy way um but i do think that i'm gonna have to go with nick frost for this one because uh danny devito i believe now is in his mid 70s um, as much as I do think he has the acting ability to continue playing that role, I'm going to still say I think Nick Frost 
looks looks very much the part and i think he would do a really good job great fresh take that's my that's my opinion there all right next up harvey dent two-face we have ryan gosling from first man in la la land and we have timothy oliphant from santa clarita diet i'm a fan of ryan gosling but i'm not a i'm not like i don't worship the ground he walks on i know you don't just for choosing him i, I appreciate his acting talent however for this role for the duplicitous um menacing evil corrupt but also obsessed with duality obsessed with justice in a very twisted sick sense of the way chance is his god i'm gonna go with timothy oliphant from hitman i think he looks the part and i think that he would play that sinister part more than ryan gosling when i haven't really seen ryan gosling play anything villainous murderous or any of that um and i have for timothy oliphant so there he gets my vote all right, next we got Edward Nigma Riddler. We have Neil Patrick Harris and from How I Met Your Mother and a series of unfortunate events and Matt Smith from Doctor Who in the Crown. Now I like Matt Smith, but there, I, in my opinion, there is no one more perfect for this role than Neil Patrick Harris. I think Neil Patrick Harris was destined to play this role. I think that he would be uh, incredible in this role. He's an amazing actor. If you guys have seen a series of unfortunate events, you already know how this character, this guy is able to transform himself for a role. Uh, it's it's in insane. If you guys didn't check that out, check it out on Netflix. It's really cool. Um, really creepy and weird, but also it kind of fits that MO of um, what Riddler is supposed to be, this sick, twisted, menacing murderer. So I like that. That's pretty cool. Good, uh, good on you for both choices, but hey, I'm going Neil Patrick Harris. All right, next up we got Victor Freeze, uh, Mr. Freeze. We have Ed Harris from Westworld and Pain and Gain. And we also have Mark Strong from Green Lantern and Shazam, a DC veteran. Now, I will say there is no one more perfect for the role of Mr. Freeze than Mark Strong. The, the problem is that we're casting for the DCEU and Mark Strong is currently uh, Dr. Savannah in Shazam, which is a DCEU continuity film. And therefore he is not a bit not able to play that role i'm gonna go with ed harris i think that ed harris is also very great for this role he would he would do very well but um again mark strong would have had my vote if he wasn't already in the dceu so that's my thoughts there but great choices nonetheless edward durant bain we have dave batista from guardians of the galaxy and hotel artemis and half thor Bjorn, uh half thor julius bjornson from Game of Thrones and Kickboxer Retaliation. Most of you guys know him as The Mountain. He is one of the largest actors in Hollywood, um, both in size and height. Um, both these actors would be great. You guys already know Boss Logic did an art piece uh, for Dave Batista as uh, Bane, and it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and I think that I would probably take Dave Batista for the role because I think that physically, vocally, um, and characteristically he's ready to play Bane. And Bane is Hispanic and I think that even though Dave Batista is probably likely um, a mix, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter as, as an actor you could probably just jump into the role and play it. I think he's more likely to jump into that role and be successful than half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Um, even though his size is closer to comic book Bane. So I'm gonna go with Dave Batista. Well, all right, let's take a look at the results here. These are the teams that were selected by Nave Wave 88. We've got first team one, Bill Burr, Isaac Gonzalez, Olivia Wilde, Bill Skarsgård, Nick Frost, Ryan Gosling, Neil Patrick Harris, Ed Harris, and Dave Batista. Now team two is Vince Vaughn, Rebecca Ferguson, Jessica Chastain, Jackie Earl Haley, Danny DeVito, Timothy Oliphant, Matt Smith, Mark Strong, and Half Thor Bjornsson. I'm going to have to choose team one for this one i think that most of the people on team one were people that i had selected over team two and i do think that both teams would be great but you guys let me know in the comments which team you liked more to play the batman rogues gallery let me know guys all right so that's the first one next let's go to world of fan casts again follow this guy on instagram follow everyone on instagram but we're going to take a look at world of fan casts thank you and welcome back to the fan casting summit let's take a look for Harvey Bullock, we got Nathan Fillion from Castle and The Rookie, and Vince Vaughn from Delivery Man and Brawl in Cell Block 99. 
both these guys would be really really cool now i will say nathan fillion there's a couple of other roles that i would like to see him play in the dceu i do like him for this role i think he would crush the role of uh harvey bullock but i'm gonna go with vince vaughn let me know what you guys think down below but both of these are winners i like both of these all right, next up for Selena Kyle, Catwoman, we have Sorinda Swan from Inhumans and Smallville. She's been, she's been both on Marvel and on DC TV. So that's pretty cool. Olivia Munn from X-Men Apocalypse and The Predator. Also great choice. Between the two of these, I'm going Sorinda Swan. I think Sorinda Swan's um, face, her kind of like, um, her kind of sassy nature and also uh her eyes specifically i think would be very specific like matching towards catwoman more so i think even than olivia munn i like olivia munn but i, I think that for this one i'm going serena swan let me know what you guys think next we've got poison ivy zoe saldana from avatar and avengers infinity war and avengers endgame uh and also anna de armas from blade runner 2049 and war dogs if I had to choose between the two of these, um, as much as I like Zoe Saldana, I'm gonna go with Anna de Armas. I think that um, she's just she's really good. I think Zoe Saldana is probably gonna be tied up with the MCU for a little while, um, even if it's just like flashbacks or whatever, you know, what have you. But I do think that Anna de Armas would do a really good job. I think she looks a lot, a lot more like Poison Ivy than Zoe Saldana does. So I'm gonna go with her. All right, next we've got. Dr. Jonathan Crane, Scarecrow, Rami Malek from Bohemian Rhapsody, Mr. Robot, and also Aiden Gillen from The Dark Knight Rises and Game of Thrones. Now, Aiden Gillen is perfect for playing a villain, for playing a total creep. I know Rami Malek is one of the better actors of our day and age, specifically for his age range. He's a very talented guy. Most people are really loving him for Bohemian Rhapsody. However, I'm gonna go with Aiden Gillen for this one because I think Aiden Gillen looks a lot closer to more of a classic, um, classic Jonathan Crane, and I think that Aiden Gillen um, is one of the best actors you could possibly get for a villainous role, especially one that's oriented on fear. If you guys have ever seen the movie Lorna Dune, it's a really old one, but he did a great job in that one playing a villain. Fantastic movie. Um, I couldn't recommend it more, but check that out and let me know what you guys think as well. All right, next up, we've got Oswald Cobblebot, uh, Cobblepot for Penguin. <laughs> to, we got Toby Jones from Captain America the First Avenger and The Hunger Games, and also Andy Serkis from Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and Black Panther. Now, Toby Jones is small. Toby Jones um, does have that characteristic. He can play that, that character um, where he's just a sinister... Uh, mean guy, but so can Andy Serkis and we've all seen the boss logic art for Andy Serkis as the penguin and it looks really really good in my opinion. I would love to see more of Andy Serkis um, since the last time we saw him was a Black Panther in a live action movie or whatever. So I want to see him play the penguin. I really like that guy. I've been a fan of his since the Lord of the Rings and I've been following his work and I really like him. I want to see him play that. Got love for Toby Jones too. But in my opinion, Andy Serkis is the guy for this job. So let me know. All right, next up, we've got Harvey Dent, Two-Face, uh, Henry Golding from Crazy Rich Asians and A Simple Favor, and Michael C. Hall from Dexter and Game Night. Now, on the basis that we know that Michael C. Hall is known for playing a killer and for being, you know, having that do du that duality in his personality, he's prime for the role. He looks more like the role. You don't have to race bend the character. It's not a problem, but you know, and if you don't have to do that, you don't piss off the fan base. There's a lot of fans that don't want that. So Michael C. Hall is the guy that I'm gonna go with because I would like to see him get really deep into that killer duality. You know what I mean? So I wanna see Dexter go ham on, on you know, Batman. <laughs> so that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> All right, next up, Edward Nigma Riddler. We've got Stanley Tucci, Captain America, the first Avenger, the Hunger Games, and Tom Cavanaugh from The Flash, CW, and Scrubs. So, wow, these are really, really good choices. I love Stanley Tucci. Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. If you guys haven't seen that video, it's pretty funny. Type in Tucci gang and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But Captain America, The First Avenger, uh, and Hunger Games. This guy's amazing. I really like his work. But Tom Cavanaugh does look a lot more like the Riddler. And 
his work on the flash shows that he can play multiple different like personalities he can play a genius he can play an idiot he can play someone that's crazy someone that's loony um someone that's clinically insane he can play all of these things in the same show and that's you know all if you take all the different interpretations of the riddler you can get something that is either an amalgam of those things or you can create your own based on what you've been inspired by so i think that tom cavanaugh has shown us that he can play those things um i would like to see tom do it all right next up we've got daniel craig from mr freeze from specter and casino royale and then also vigo mortensen lord of the rings return of the king and green book so i like this i like this this pairing right here both legendary actors for this one i think i'm gonna go with daniel craig i'm gonna go with daniel craig for this one to play mr freeze um even though vigo mortensen's one of my favorite actors i really do like daniel craig and i think he would knock this one out of the park but let me know if you disagree i want to hear from you next up we've got bane javier bardem this one specifically was cast sent in to me with the notes voice actor and voice actor so preferably like either a cgi body or have a different bigger actor fill in the body and then just have javier bardem or danny trejo fill in for the voice you know do some vo voice work and just keep the mask on bane i think that's a great idea i would like to see something more along the lines of that that would be really cool um so javier bardem voice great idea fantastic actor no country for old men in skyfall and also danny trejo from ridiculous six which is a funny movie and machete kills which is not a funny movie <laughs> so i like i like both of these if i had to choose one i'd probably go javier bardem though I got love for Danny, but I think Javier is Javier is what's up right now, and he's he's a well-respected, talented actor that a lot of people are a fan of right now. So I'm gonna go with Javier Bar. All right, now let's take a look at the team. So team one: Nathan Fillion, Sorinda Swan, Zoe Saldana, Rami Malek, Toby Jones, Henry Golding, Stanley Tucci, Daniel Craig, and Javier Bottom to voice. Next we have for team two. Vince Vaughn, Olivia Munn, Anna de Armas, Aiden Gillen, Andy Serkis, Michael C. Hall, Tom Cavanaugh, Vigo Mortensen, and Danny Trejo for voicing. So, if I had to choose between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with Team 2. I'm gonna go with Team 2. Vince Vaughn, Munn, Anna de Armas, Aiden Gillen, Andy Serkis, Michael C. Hall, Tom Cavanaugh, Vigo Mortensen. I think that Team 2, even the ones that I didn't choose over Team 1, are so good that... I'm okay, I'm comfortable with the ones that I must have from Team 2. I think the rest can totally fill in and I think it'd be great. So that's my choice there. All right, let me know what you guys think down below. Let's keep moving. Next up, Correct Rankings Fancast. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. So first we got Vince Vaughn from Brawl and Cellbox 99 and Delivery Man and David Harbour from Hellboy and Stranger Things. I really like both of these guys. I like both of these castings. I, I think David Harbour, he was one of my top picks for a number of roles that we've already fan cast that are not inside of the DCEU. They're Marvel characters that we were casting. Nevertheless, um, between the two of these, I think I'm still going to go with Vince Vaughn for Harvey Bullock. I really like that idea. Love David Harbour. Um, I, I can't wait to see him in uh, whatever role he's going to play in the Black Widow movie for MCU. But even still, David Harbour, great choice. Next up, Selena Kyle, Catwoman. We've got Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones and Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Olivia Wilde from Cowboys and Aliens and Tron Legacy. I'll make this one fast. I'm gonna go with Olivia Wilde for this one. Um, I like Amelia Clark, but I don't like her as much as I like Olivia Wilde for this role. So I'm gonna go with uh, Olivia Wilde. Poison Ivy, we've got Courtney Hope from Swelter and the Divergent series, Allegiant. We also have Jessica Chastain from Miss Sloan and Dark Phoenix. I, between the two of these ladies, I'm going to choose Jessica Chastain for this role. I think she's great for the role. I'm not, a, I'm not very familiar. I saw the Divergent series, but I'm not very familiar with Courtney Hope outside of that. So I'm gonna go with Jessica Chastain. Next up, we've got Dr. Jonathan Crane Scarecrow. Adam Driver from Star Wars The Force Awakens and the recent Star Wars movies, also Black Klansman, and Alan Tudyk from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Doom Patrol. I love Alan Tudyk. I think that he would be awesome in the role of Scarecrow. Um, he's crushing it on Doom Patrol right now. If you guys haven't seen that TV show on the DC streaming service, it is awesome. But Adam Driver, I think, is 
probably my top pick for this role. So I'm going to go with Adam Driver for this one. Next up, we have Penguin, Jonah Hill from War Dogs and Maniac, and also Nick Frost from Into the Badlands and Shaun of the Dead. This may surprise you, but I'm going to go with Jonah Hill. I think he's great. I think he totally looks like Penguin, even when he's skinnier, when he's not like really overweight or anything like that, because he, you know, he's known for his fluctuation in weight more than even Christian Bale. However, Nick Frost, great choice, close second, but I'm gonna go with Jonah Hill. Next up, we've got Harvey Dent, Two-Face. We've got Lee Schreiber, uh, who played Sabretooth in X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, and also Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, where he played Wilson Fisk. Then we also have Michael C. Hall again, Dexter in the Crown. Between the two of these, I think I might choose Lee Schreiber. I might choose Lee Schreiber because Lee Schreiber is wickedly intimidating. If you if if he were to be Two Face, I would be scared of him even in his normal Harvey Dent mode before he got the face melted. He'd be just scary, dude. So I would pick him. Next, Edward Nigma Riddler. Eddie Redmayne, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and Les Miserables, if I'm saying that correctly, I can't, I can never get that. However, Bill Hader is the other person from Barry and Hot Rod, and he's also from SNL. I, between the two of these, I like Eddie, but I love Bill Hader. I love Bill Hader, like way more than I like Eddie Redmayne. I like Eddie Redmayne, I got nothing against him, but I, I love Bill Hader, and he's one of the most underappreciated actors of our day today, Bill Hader. Fantastic actor. I'm going with Bill Hader. He's perfect for this role. Next, Victor Freeze. We have Patrick Stewart, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Logan. And we also have Christopher Maloney from Man of Steel and True Blood. Now, Christopher Maloney had campaigned for a little bit to be the, the DCEU Batman after Ben Affleck. Um, that's still kind of in the air because we don't know what's happening there, um, which is different from, Christo from Matt Reeves' Batman. It's not the same. And... Uh, but I don't think I would want him for Mr. Freeze. I see it. I can see the physical resemblance. And I think he would play the part well. But I think Patrick Stewart is like he was born to play that. He would crush Mr. Freeze. He would make Mr. Freeze someone that our empathy levels are through the roof for. Like he could he could tug our heartstrings right out of our chest even as he's beating up one of our favorite heroes. So I'm going with Patrick Stewart. Next, we have Bane. Again, it's Dave Bautista versus Manu Bennett, who played Slade in Arrow on CW, and he also played the Shannara Chronicles, um, where he played the uh, the Druid, I forget the name of. But nevertheless, both guys stacked, both guys jacked, both guys talented actors, but I think the better actor between the two of them is probably Manu Bennett, but he's less recognized and he's had less notable roles. I'm gonna go with Manu Bennett for this one, which surprised me because I didn't think of him on my list for Bane. Um, but nevertheless, you guys let me know. It's really close. In my head, it's really, really close. But I think that Bane uh, would be really well played by Dave. But it's just like hairline. I like Manu Bennett. So I'm gonna go with Manu. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, now let's look at the teams. Vince Vaughn, Amelia Clark, Courtney Hope, Adam Driver, Jonah Hill, Lee Schreiber, Eddie Redmayne, Patrick Stewart, Dave Batista, and then team two, we have David Harbour, Olivia Wilde, Jessica Chastain, Alan Tudyk, Nick Frost, Michael C. Hall, Bill Hader, Christopher Maloney, and Manu Bennett. Wow, I really like these teams. If I had to choose between the two of them, I'm gonna go, hmm, team two. Let me know if you guys disagree with me here. This one's really close because so many of them are like up and down for me. Like some of my favorites are here, then here, then there, then there, then there. It's very much like opposites, opposites, opposites almost the whole way through. So for me, it's like a coin toss, but I really do like both teams. Let me know. Next, we've got Agent Fancast. Welcome to the Fancasting Summit and excellent image there. For your profile picture that's really cool so uh we have harvey bullock joel egerton from brighton warrior i love that guy and nathan fillion from the rookie and castle both guys have played cops both guys are no stranger to like fantasy comic stuff i really like joel egerton i'm gonna go with joel on this one even though i like nathan fillion a lot as well but i'm going joel 
Next, we have Catwoman. We've got Morena Bakarin from Firefly and Deadpool. And we also have Isaac Gonzalez from 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 <laughs> from da from Dusk Until Dawn, the series, and Baby Driver. Sorry I messed that up, but nevertheless, I between the two of these, I think I would choose Morena Bakarin from Deadpool. I like the way that she looks, seems very Catwoman to me. The just a little bit more of the sharper features big eyes they both have big eyes but i like i think i'm gonna go with morena bakarin from deadpool all right next up for poison ivy amelia clark from solo a star wars story and game of thrones and aja naomi king from how to get away with murder and the upside now between the two of these i think i'm going to go with amelia clark i don't really know much of aja naomi king's work i didn't see the upside i didn't see how to get away with murder um, I haven't seen a lot of her work, but I have seen a lot of Amelia Clark's work. So I'm going to go with Amelia Clark on the basis that she looks more like Poison Ivy and I, I'm re I recognize her acting ability and I think she'd do a good job. So I'm going to go there. Now, Dr. Jonathan Crane Scarecrow, Dominic Cooper from Captain America, the first Avenger and Preacher. He's also in Warcraft and also Rami Malek from Bohemian Rhapsody and Mr. Robot. For this one, this is tough. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Rami Malek. I think that he has much more ability as an actor to, per to perform more diverse types of roles. Um, Dominic Cooper did a great job in Warcraft. I think that movie was not as appreciated as it maybe should have been for the actors. Not necessarily for the overall film, but for the actors. Uh, they did They did well. But the uh, but I think Rami Malek is just so talented. I think that he would be able to pull off the fear, the creep. You know, I think he'd be able to pull all that off. So Rami's got my vote. Next, let's go with Oswald, Oswald Cobblepot Penguin. We have Peter Dinklage from Avengers: Infinity War and Game of Thrones, and Andy Serkis, Star Wars: The Last Jedi and Black Panther. Between the two of these guys, I I see where you're going with with you know like Peter Dinklage because Penguin's supposed to be short. But I think I'm still going to go with Andy Serkis because you could use camera tricks and whatnot to make him seem smaller than everyone else. That's totally fine and doable. Andy Serkis isn't even that tall, really. I think he's kind of small. But he's closer to like a normal dude height, like 5'9 or something, um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Andy Serkis would do such a good job in the role, performing the role, that... It wouldn't matter that he's not that short. They could just make him look short. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go with Andy. All right, next up, we've got Harvey Dent, Jake Gyllenhaal from Spider-Man Far From Home and Prisoners. We also have Dominic Cooper from Preacher and Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, I think Harvey Dent is a much more appropriate place to cast Dominic Cooper than for like Scarecrow, for instance. But nevertheless, Dominic Cooper uh, is really good but I don't think he's as good as Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is the man, and I'm really excited to see him play Mysterio. However, for Harvey Dent, I, it's got to go to Jake Gyllenhaal for me. I think he would just he would just crush on that role. So good. So I'm gonna go with Jake Gyllenhaal. Next, we've got Riddler, Rami Malek from Bohemian Rhapsody and Mr. Robot, and also Matt Smith from Doctor Who and The Crown. Between the two of these, I'm going with Matt Smith. Um, I think that Matt Smith is better equipped to play this role and i like him uh in this role he looks a lot closer to the character so i'm gonna go with him all right mr freeze christoph Waltz from inglorious bastards and django unchained and edward norton from the incredible hulk and birdman now these are really interesting choices um i think that edward norton is a great actor i like him but I don't think he looks very much like the role. I think Christoph Waltz looks a lot closer to the role. Uh, again, Mr. Freeze is supposed to be older. Um, you could have a younger man play him, but it's, you know, Mr. Freeze is supposed to be older. So Christoph Waltz has my vote. I think he'd be great in that role and I'd love to see him do it. So there we go. Now for Bane, Javier Bardem from No Country for Old Men and Loving Pablo, and also Benicio Del Toro from Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a huge fan of Benicio Del Toro. I don't know, 
I, I'm not I'm not certain why everyone likes him so much. I thought he was good as the collector because he plays creepy really well. In Star Wars The Last Jedi, he did a good job again playing a creep, but I haven't seen him give me anything that makes me fearful of him. Bane is supposed to be someone that strikes fear into your heart, and I think Javier Bardem has that ability. So I'm gonna go with Javi. All right, let's take a look at the teams. Joel Egerton, Marina Bakarin, Amelia Clark, Dominic Cooper, Peter Dinklage, Jake Gyllenhaal, Remy Malik, Christoph Waltz, and Javier Bardem. Now, Nathan Fillion for the second team, uh, Isaac Gonzalez, Aja Naomi King, Remy Malik, Andy Serkis, Dominic Cooper, Matt Smith, Edward Norton, Benicio Del Toro. So, between the two of these, you can't escape choosing Dominic Cooper and Remy Malik. <laughs> Someone's a huge fan of these guys. But I'm going to... Take a look. I think that I'm going to go with team one across the board, almost entirely across the board. Um, I'm gonna go with team one, yeah. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. So the only person I would have flipped really is uh, Penguin. But nevertheless, team one for me all the way. So let me know what you guys think down below. All right, Dream Fancast, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. We're going to start to speed up a little bit through these, but we've got Russell Crowe from Man of Steel and Gladiator, who I love, and John Goodman, who I also love, from Kong Skull Island and 10 Cloverfield Lane. For Harvey Bullock, I think I'm going to go with John Goodman, but Russell Crowe is also really great. Um, all right, Catwoman, Rosa Salazar from Alita Battle Angel and Maze Runner, The Death Cure, and Stephanie Beatriz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Lego Movie 2, The Second Part. Between the two of these... For Catwoman, I'm gonna go with Rosa Salazar, but I do really like Stephanie Beatriz. I just, there's other roles I think I'd like to see her in. All right, so next up we've got Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, Haley Bennett from The Magnificent Seven and The Equalizer, and Isla Fisher from Tag and Hot Rod. Between the two of these two ladies, I think I would like to see Isla Fisher get the role. I think she's great. She's really funny when she needs to be, not that Poison Ivy needs to be funny. In fact, I would not want her to be funny. Nevertheless, she's a great actor, so that's my choice. Next, Scarecrow, Paul Dano from Prisoners and There Will Be Blood, and Alan Tudyk from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Doom Patrol. I Between the two of these guys, I am definitely going Alan Tudyk. I think Paul Dano is a good actor, but Alan Tudyk, for me, he... he he would crush the role. He would crush it. So Alan Tudyk's the man. Next, Penguin. We got Jonah Hill from 22 Jump Street and Maniac, and also Andy Serkis from Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and Black Panther. This one is close. I really like both of these guys for the role, but for me, it's Jonah Hill. All right. Next up, for Harvey Dent, Two-Face, we got Tom Cavanaugh from The Flash CW Scrubs, and Adrian Pazdar from Supergirl and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., now, I really do like Adrian Pistar. I didn't really know him before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I really liked him there. He did a great job. He plays a government official, a military guy. I think that he has the ability to play someone duplicitous, someone with two, uh, two minds, two personalities. I think he would do this role better than Tom Cavanaugh because I think that Adrian Pizdar holds this intimidating persona throughout the entire show of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I'm gonna go with Adrian. Next, Edward Nigma Riddler. We have Miles Teller from War Dogs and thank you for your service. And also James McAvoy from Glass and X-Men Days of Future Past. For me, this one is really easy. I'm gonna go with James McAvoy. He can play crazy, he can play intelligent, he can play anything you flipping want. He is so good, so talented, and he is a redhead. He's a natural redhead. And he is, uh, you know, he's just one of the best actors alive right now. So I'm going to go with James McAvoy. It's really hard to not see that. Although I will say the head shape for Miles Teller is a lot closer. But I'm still going with James McAvoy. Next up, we've got Mr. Freeze, Stephen Moyer from The Gifted and True Blood, and Stanley Tucci from Captain America, The First Avenger, and The Hunger Games. I really like this choice with Stephen Moyer. It's out of, outside the box. You don't see it very often. I like him on The Gifted as the dad. Very cool. But Stanley Tucci looks way more, way more like Mr. Freeze. And I think he would play that very well. So again, just like I said for Patrick Stewart, he can pull on your heartstrings. He can really get you invested into the character. I'm really all about Stanley Tucci. So let's do Stanley. All right, next, Bane. We've got Manu Bennett from Arrow CW, The Hobbit, and uh, from Arrow CW and The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, and Javier Bardem from Skyfall and No Country for Old Men. 
This one's tough. I would choose Javi if it was just for like voice. But for Manu, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna probably go Manu because he's got the physique, he's got the ability to play that, that brute, that savage. Um, there was even an episode on Arrow where he's playing Deathstroke, but they they juice him up um, with the Mirakuru, and he basically goes full Bane. And it was really cool to see. But um, yeah, he he was basically like a pseudo Bane, just a Deathstroke Bane in that episode. So it was pretty cool. Like that, I like Manu Bennett. He's got my vote for this one. Next, let's take a look at the team. So team one, Russell Crowe, Rosa Salazar, Haley Bennett, Paul Dano, Jonah Hill, Tom Cavanaugh, Miles Teller, Stephen Moyer, and Manu Bennett. For team two, we have John Goodman, Stephanie Beatrice, Isla Fisher, Alan Tudyk, Andy Serkis, Adrian Pizdar, James McAvoy, Stanley Tucci, and Javier Bardem. Both teams are really good, but I'm gonna go with team two for this one. John Goodman, I think would crush it as uh, Harvey Bullock, and I really like Alan Tudyk, Andy Serkis, Adrian Pizdar, James McAvoy, and Stanley Tucci. So that's my vote. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, let's keep moving. Reimagine FanCast. Welcome to the FanCasting Summit. So let's take a look at your choices. Vince Vaughn for Harvey Bullock. Again, fantastic choice. And for Dean Norris, a little bit older choice. But Breaking Bad and The Big Bang Theory, he's proven himself. He's a really good actor. And he can play that guy that's just like cynical. He cuts corners. Um, he's rough around the edges. He's not a straight cut cop, but he is one of the good guys. Um, I think that both guys would do this really well, but I'm going to go with Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn is probably my favorite person for the role. And next we have for Catwoman, we have Gemma Arterton, if I'm saying that right, Arterton, uh, from Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, and Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Then we also have Mary Elizabeth Winstead from Sky High and 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, Mary Elizabeth Winstead just got cast in the DCEU. Um, to play in Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. I think that's the name. And uh, that's the official title of the movie. It's a big, fat, long name. She's cast in that already. She's technically already in the DCU. Otherwise, she would have had my vote. I'm going to go with Gemma Arterton because she's also great. Uh, in my opinion, not as good as Mary Elizabeth Winstead. But, you know, she's already in the DCU. So that's, you know, outside of my options here. So thank you for making that easy. Next, we have... For Poison Ivy, Natalie Dormer from Game of Thrones and Captain America the First Avenger, and Karen Gillan from Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Avengers Endgame. I really like both of these ladies. I think Karen Gillan is almost entirely perfect for this role. However, I think Natalie Dormer has a little bit more of that edge, like close to like that seductress kind of, she's, she's that poison bait that's going to draw men in and then she's she's there ruining, you know? So I think Natalie Dormer has that edge as an actress and as a pers as a personality. I think that I would probably give this one to Natalie Dormer. All right, and then for Paul Dano, Prisoners, uh, for Scarecrow, we have Paul Dano, Prisoners, and There Will Be Blood, and also Bill Skarsgård from Deadpool 2 and It. I really like both of these guys. Um, I think that for Scarecrow, I would probably go Paul Dano. I think that he, both guys can play off a real evil creep. However, Paul Dano, I think, has this a little bit more, and he's got a little bit more of that intimidation factor, you know what I mean? When you look at him, he's got a little bit more of that don't mess with me kind of thing, you know? Whereas Bill Skarsgård is like a huge question mark. So in my head, I think I'm gonna give it to Paul Dano. Next up, we've got Penguin, John Goodman, and Peter Dinklage. Again, love Peter Dinklage. I think he's better if you're gonna go for height because John Goodman's huge. But on acting, on ability, on looks, um, other than height, I would probably give this to John Goodman. But Peter Dinklage would also do really well. I wanna see him in the role though. I wanna see someone like draw him or do a boss logic art or something like that, you know what I mean? So this one's kind of like a coin toss, but I'm gonna give it to John. All right, next up, we've got Matthew McConaughey, Interstellar and Dallas Buyers Club. Jamie Dornan from Once Upon a Time and Robin Hood. Both guys would crush this role. I like both these guys. I think Jamie Dornan um, looks a little bit closer to the comic book look for the role. However, I will say Matthew McConaughey would play a mean, mean Two-Face. And I would love to see that. Plus, he's a huge dude. So that would also lend itself. Like if you got the thugs, they all look pretty tough. But then you got this guy that's just towering head and shoulders over that. I think that that would be really cool to see. I'm going to give it to Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. 
Next up, we got Riddler, Miles Teller for more dogs and thank you for your service, and Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man and Brothers. Dude, I am a huge Tobey Maguire fan. Love the guy, love his work. I love Miles Teller too. However, I'm gonna give this one to Toby, dude. Toby looks a little bit closer to the role, and I think that he would be able to he would be able to pull it off as much as Miles Teller. So I'm gonna go straight to favoritism and say Toby Maguire. All right, next up, Giancarlo Esposito from Once Upon a Time and Breaking Bad, and Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad and Power Rangers. For this role, I would go with Brian Cranston. Actually, if you had put Giancarlo Esposito in the in the position of Two Face, I might have chose him. But I'm gonna go with Brian Cranston for Mr. Freeze. I really like Giancarlo though. He's a great actor. He makes every show that he's in better. It's just a fact. He's he's so good. Um, but Brian Cranston is also that good. So I'm gonna go with Brian Cranston because he's way closer to the role. I think it would be great. So next up, Bane. We've got Danny Trejo from The Flash, CW, and The Ridiculous Six, and also. Raymond Cruz from Breaking Bad and Training Day. Between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with Danny Trejo. I really like Danny Trejo. I know he's getting up there in age, but he could probably, like we mentioned earlier, he might be able to voice it and then have someone else just kind of be the body work, you know what I mean? Or CGI it. You could CGI Bane and just have Danny Trejo show up for the, for the voice. So I think that would be really cool. All right, let's take a look at the teams. From Reimagine Fancast, we have Vince Vaughn, Gemma Arterton, Natalie Dormer, Paul Dano, John Goodman, Matthew McConaughey, Miles Teller, Giancarlo Esposito, and Danny Trejo. And second, we have Dean Norris, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Karen Gillan, Bill Skarsgård, Peter Dinklage, Jamie Dornan, Toby Maguire, Brian Cranston, and Raymond Cruz. Now, for this one, almost all the way across, I'm gonna have to go with Team 1. I really like Team 1. Now, there's plenty of options on Team 2 that I really, really like, but I think I just, I tip a little bit more towards team one. Let me know what you guys think down below. I love these castings because they're, a lot of these ones are really outside the box. I like these. So let's keep moving. Next up, we have Nerds United. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. We've got for Harvey Bullock, Dean Norris from Total Recall and Breaking Bad, and John Carroll Lynch from Fargo and Zodiac. For this one, I really like Dean Norris. I mentioned this earlier. I think that he would be great in this role. Um, John Carroll Lynch, also good, but I'm gonna go with Dean Norris for this one. Next, we have Catwoman, Lauren Cohan from Supernatural and The Walking Dead, and Anna de Armas from Knock Knock and War Dogs. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Lauren Cohan. Next, after this, we've got Pamela Isley. We have Alexander Breckenridge from The Walking Dead and This Is Us, and Carice Van Houten from Game of Thrones and The Fifth Estate. Given the choice between these two ladies for Poison Ivy, I'm going Alexander Breckenridge. For Scarecrow, we have Matt Dillon from The House That Jack Built and Takers, and also Zachary Quinto from Heroes and American Horror Story. I think Matt Dillon is really good for this, but I'm a huge Zachary Quinto fan. I know this one may, sh may shock you guys. I'm gonna go Zachary Quinto. Let me know if you guys feel the same way as I do or if you think I'm crazy for not choosing Matt Dillon. Honestly, I very well could be. He's, I think he's really good for that role. So both of these are a win in my head. Next up, let's go Penguin. Steve Carell from Vice and Foxcatcher. This is a great choice. And also Tim Roth from The Incredible Hulk and Tin Star. If you guys don't remember him from The Incredible Hulk, I believe he plays the Abomination. But given the choice between the two of these, I'm going Steve Carell. I think he's actually really good for the role. I don't think it's a stretch at all. He's really good at playing serious roles. Um, he just doesn't get the opportunity to do that very often because he got so much attention for being funny that a lot of people just don't give him serious roles. And I, I really like him in, uh, you like talk about Foxcatcher. What a role, man, what a, what a performance. I really like Steve Carell. He looks the part, he could do it. I like him for that. Let's go with Steve Carell. Next. Clive Owen for Two-Face from Intruders in the Born Identity and John Hamm from Tag and Baby Driver. Clive Owen's great, but John Hamm is literally perfect and probably born for the role of Two-Face. I think he would do such a good job in this role. I'm gonna go with John Hamm. All right, next up we've got Riddler, Andrew J. West from Once Upon a Time and The Walking Dead, and also Andrew Scott from Sherlock and Spectre. Oh man, Andrew J. West is good, but Andrew Scott, man. If you guys have seen Sherlock, 
you already know. Like, he needs to play Riddler, and he needs to play it yesterday, dude. We need to get this guy on board. So, Andrew Scott for Riddler is my choice by a landslide. Mr. Freeze, we've got James Spader from Age of Ultron and The Blacklist, and Jude Law from Captain Marvel and Sherlock Holmes. I really like both of these. I like James Spader, but I don't know if I would put him in the role of Mr. Freeze. For me, I'm going to have to go with Jude Law because I do see Jude Law playing Mr. Freeze more so than I see James Spader in the role. So I'm going to go with Jude Law. Next, we have Matthew Willig for Bane, Concussion, and the Benchwarmers, and also Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy and Hotel Artemis. Between the two of these, I'm going to go with Dave Bautista, but it's close because Matthew Willig is a giant, like he's huge. I think he's like close to seven feet tall. Like he's really tall. And he looks like Bane. And he's giant, he's giant, he's jacked. Now, Dave Batista is not the tallest guy on earth, but he is very, very built. And he would be able to probably pull off the Spanish speaking aspect as well. Not sure if Matthew Willick does or does not, but great actor, I just haven't seen him in a lot. So I'm gonna go with Dave. All right, Dean Norris, Lauren Cohan, Alexander Beckenridge, Matt Dillon, Steve Carell, Clive Owen, Andrew J. West, James Spader, Matthew Willig. And for team two, we have John Carroll Lynch, Anna de Armas, Karis Van Houten, Zachary Quinto, Tim Roth, John Hamm, Andrew Scott, Jude Law, and Dave Batista. This one is really, really tough. Because of all of the male villains, except Penguin, which is the majority, I'm gonna go with team two. Even though team one, the women and Harvey Bullock and Penguin are all team one for me. It's almost half and half, but I'm gonna go with team two. Let me know what you guys like down below in the comments. All right, let's keep going. Shadow Fancast, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. The Shadow Fancast, we have John Goodman for Harvey Bullock from Kongsco Island and 10 Cloverfield Lane and David Harbour from Hellboy and Stranger Things. Between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with David Harbour. I think David Harbour could pull off a little bit more of that rough and gruff, even though John Goodman can do that as well. Um, I'd like to see David Harbour get that role. I really like the guy, and I think that he deserves to get a good role like that in a comic book movie after Hellboy kind of tanked. So, love you, man. David Harbour. All right. Selena Kyle. We have Marina Bakarin from Deadpool and Gotham, and also Jamie Alexander from Blindspot and Thor The Dark World. I think this role should go to Jamie Alexander. I think she looks exactly like much of the comic book art. I mean, Miranda Burkarin certainly does as well, but I think Jamie Alexander is a fantastic actress. I would love, 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 love to see her in the role. Next, Poison Ivy, we have Isla Fisher from Hot Rod and Tag and Evan Rachel Wood from Westwood and True Blood. I'm gonna go with Evan Rachel Wood. I think she's a better actress than Isla Fisher is, or at least better at serious roles. So I'm gonna go with Evan Rachel Wood. All right, next up, Adam Driver from Black Klansman, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and Jackie Earl Haley from Shutter Island and Watchmen. Both awesome for this for this role. But, actually, no, 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 wait, hold up. I was gonna say Adam Driver because he's one of my favorites for this, for this role. But if you can get someone that's a little bit older, that in my head is a little bit better because we're talking DCEU, we're not talking about Matt Reeves' Batman. I'm gonna go with Jackie Earl Haley for this one. Surprise, surprise, I surprised myself. All right, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, all right, Penguin, we have Alfred Molina, the great Alfred Molina from Spider-Man 2 and Raiders of the Lost Ark and Jonah Hill from War Dogs and Maniac. This is really tough, guys. I mean, I would love to see Alfred Molina play another comic book role and certainly look at him in that tux. Dude, he's ready to play the Penguin right there. But Jonah Hill is also great. I think he would also do the role very well. But I'm gonna give it to Alfred Molina. Let's go, let's go with that older team. Let's do it. Harvey Dent, Two-Face, we have Sam Witwer from Smallville and Supergirl and John Hamm from Tag and Baby Driver. Now, both of these guys, they would knock this role out of the park. Grand slam, home run, fantastic. But I was gonna go with John Hamm and then he showed me Sam Witwer. I love Sam Witwer. Um, he's great at playing someone that's got like a split personality, second personality, or just raging out, that kind of stuff. If you guys saw him in Smallville, you already know what I'm talking about. He played Darth Maul, for goodness sakes. This guy is amazing. So I'm gonna go with Sam Witwer. Riddler, Neil Patrick Harris or Jim Parsons. You guys know Jim Parsons from The Big Bang Theory and Hidden Figures. Great actor, um, but I'm gonna go with Neil Patrick Harris. I don't think there's anyone more perfect for this role. 
Next, we have Patrick Stewart for Mr. Freeze and Ed Harris for Mr. Freeze. Given the choice between the two of these, I might have to go with Patrick Stewart. It's really good. It's good. But Ed Harris is one of my top picks. He's one of my top two picks, I believe. So I love him in the role, but I'm going to go with Patrick Stewart. All right, next up, we've got Bane. Half Thor Julius Bjornsson from Game of Thrones and Kickboxer Retaliation literally has the physique of Bane. And Dave Batista, who also has a very close physique to Bane. Guardians of the Galaxy and Hotel Artemis. Ooh, it's close. If you're going to keep him masked the whole time, I would say do Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. However, Dave Batista, you could take the mask off and you could, you could still have your Bane. I would love to see Dave Batista play him, and I think he's one of my top picks anyway, so I'm going to go with Dave Batista. Let's take a look at the teams. John Goodman, Marina Bakarin, Isla Fisher, Adam Driver, Alfred Molina, Sam Whitworth, Neil Patrick Harris, Patrick Stewart, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Team two is David Harbour, Jamie Alexander, Evan Rachel Wood, Jackie Earl Haley, Jonah Hill, John Hamm, Jim Parsons, Ed Harris, and Dave Batista. There is literally no one on this list that I do not love in the role. I love every single person that is on this list for that role. It's incredible. Both teams are a win, but if I have to have to have to choose, I think I'm gonna go with team one. John Goodman, Marina McCarran, Isla Fisher, Adam Driver, Alfred Molina, Sam Whitworth, Neil Patrick Harris, Patrick Stewart, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. So that's my team. All right, let me know what you guys think down below. All right, next up, just another FanCast account. Welcome back to the FanCasting Summit. Now this guy, I love this guy because he always has like one team that is race bent and one team that is kind of just like his picks. And I, I feel like I connect a lot of the time with your second team picks, but let's get into this. I want to show you guys. So let's just, let's talk about it. First for Harvey Bullock, we've got Ice Cube straight out of Compton and Boys in the Hood and Adam Sandler, the Ridiculous Six and Blended. He's in a lot of things. Both these guys have shown us that they, they can venture from comedy, but they usually stay pretty close to comedy. That's usually their wheelhouse. However, if you guys saw The Ridiculous Six, it's stupid funny for Adam Sandler, but he actually plays the serious one in the movie. Like he doesn't actually have jokes. Everyone else has jokes. He's the serious one in the movie. There's situational humor for him, but everyone else gets to like crack jokes and be silly. And he's like, he's the actually serious one. Ice Cube can play serious, dead serious. So between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Ice Cube for this one. I really like that. So Ice Cube for Harvey Bullock, I think works really well. Now for Selena Kyle Catwoman, we have Jamie Chung from The Gifted and Gotham. I love that chick. She does such a good job playing Blink on The Gifted. And Juliet Danielle from The Room and Texas Cotton. Now we've fan cast this, this chick before from just another fan cast account many times. So I know you're a huge fan of this chick. I don't, I haven't seen her work. I haven't seen The Room. I can't go off of, um, you know, acting ability because I haven't seen her, unfortunately, but I have seen Jamie Chung. So I'm going to go with Jamie Chung for this one. All right. Poison Ivy, Pamela Isley. We've got Lupita Nyong'o from Black Panther and 12 Years a Slave. Great actress. And Kylie Jenner from Ocean's 8 and Party Next Door, Come and See Me. Both of these chicks, I don't think work for this role. I think Lupita Nyong'o is a great actress, but she doesn't in any way look like Poison Ivy at all. And Kylie Jenner, I don't think has acting talent. I mean, a little bit, but not really. If I had to choose between the two of these, I might actually go with Kylie Jenner because her looks are so much closer to uh, Poison Ivy, depending on what the movie is. If it's just Bat Batman versus Poison Ivy and she's got to really pull the acting, then I don't, I would probably give it to Lupita. But if it's like, you know, it's her and another villain, maybe I would probably give it to Kylie because she just looks way more. I would believe it more. You know what I mean? I would, I would believe it seeing her in the role more. That's, that's where I'm going to leave it with that. It's weird, weird scenario for this casting, but I respect your, your opinions here. Plus Lupita is a fantastic actress. Loved her in Black Panther. So Scarecrow, John Cho, Star Trek and Sleepy Hollow. Um, and Danny DeVito from Dumbo and Batman Returns from 1998. He played the Penguin. Now you want him to play the Scarecrow. I don't, I think that Danny DeVito is a great actor. I think that he can play the role, but I would, I would not believe him in the role. And I wouldn't even be scared of him. He's so small, you know? So it's, for me, it's got to be John Cho. Plus John Cho's great. I like John Cho. I think he's a good actor and I've never seen him play something like super creepy. 
So it would be really interesting to see. Now, maybe he did play that in Sleepy Hollow. I didn't get a chance to really see that. I saw like the first episode. So um, it would be really cool to see that. I'll give it to John Cho. Next up, we have for Penguin, <laughs> dude. Winston Duke for Penguin from Black Panther and Us and Kevin James from Here Comes the Boom and King of Queens. Now, I want to pick your brain on this one, dude. I wish you I wish you had this. Comment in the live because I want to read what you have to say later, all right? So, Winston Duke, Black Panther and Us. He is huge. He's a stud. He's a strapping hunk of man. This guy is a talented actor. He was my favorite part of the Black Panther movie, including Killmonger. He... Winston Duke was my favorite part of that movie. I, I don't even know how he got cast for Penguin. This is very, very odd to me. I don't see any similarity in, in acting ability. I have not seen that. Oh, you must be thinking from Us. I didn't see Us, but perhaps he plays someone that's really sinister in that movie. Um, that must be it. But I just, I don't see it at, at all. But I do see Kevin James. Kevin James, even though he's known for playing silly, ridiculous kind of characters, or funny stuff i think that kevin james could pull it out i think he could pull off the role of penguin uh not my top choice but it could work so anyway i'm gonna go with kevin james here but man crazy I, I'm, I'm glad i got to see winston duke in here but very odd choosing him for the penguin especially because penguin's small and winston duke is like a hunk of a giant man he's crazy all right next up we've got two-face Idris Elba from Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw and Pacific Rim, one of the best actors right now. And Chris Pratt, one of the favorite actors right now, from Jurassic World and Guardians of the Galaxy. I love Chris Pratt, and I think that he might be able to do the role of Two-Face, but I'm going to go with Idris Elba for this one. I think Idris has the ability to do it. I think Idris can pull it off, and he would give us that sinister, crazy Two-Face that we all want to see. Plus... If you guys are like, hey, race bending, it's a little bit odd. Just remember that it was um, it was the actor that played Lando Calrissian that gave us Harvey Dent back in what was that, 1980 something? I forget what it was, but it was with uh, Michael Keaton. Remember, uh, he played Harvey Dent. And he gave that opening speech in the movie with uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker. It never came to fruition. He never became Two Face, but he did play Harvey Dent, so that was pretty cool. So. There has been a black Harvey Dent before. So next, Riddler. Steven Yuen from The Walking Dead and Sorry to Bother You for Riddler and Rob Schneider from The Ridiculous Six and Benchwarmers. Now for this one, this will surprise you, but I like Rob Schneider for Riddler. I think that he would do a really good job. Um, he's really like silly, analytical, kind of quirky. And I think that that would be really, really good for the Riddler. So I'm gonna go with him. Next up, let's take a look at Mr. Freeze. Oscar Isaac from X-Men Apocalypse and Star Wars The Force Awakens and also Owen Wilson from Zoolander and Wonder. I think that I think that Owen Wilson would actually be really good in the role, um, but it'd just be kind of hard to get over his voice, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go with Oscar Isaac. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. So Oscar Isaac has my vote. Next up, Bane, Mahershala Ali from Green Book and Luke Cage from Netflix. Uh, crazy, the guy's savage. Um, and Patrick Warburton. Oh, right. Patrick Warburton. From a series of unfortunate events. And from Family Guy. <laughs> I think that he would do really good. I think if, between the two of these, I'd probably pick Patrick Warburton. But I would want him to be the body and have someone else voice it. Even though I love Patrick Warburton's voice, to me, that's not Bane. So I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, that's what I think. So first up, we have... Ice Cube, Jamie Chung, Lupita Nyong'o, John Cho, Winston Duke, Idris Elba, Steven Yuen, Oscar Isaac, and Mahershala Ali. And then we have, following that on team two, Adam Sandler, Juliet Danielle, Kylie Jenner, Danny DeVito, Kevin James, Chris Pratt, Rob Schneider, Owen Wilson, and Patrick Warburton. If I had to choose between team one and team two, I'm gonna go with team one. Because I think Ice Cube would do better than Adam Sandler. I think Jamie Chung would do better than Juliet. I think that acting wise, Lupita would beat Kylie. John Cho would beat Danny. Winston Duke, I think I would still take Kevin over that, but hey. And then Idris Elba uh, over Chris Pratt. I would take, uh, I would still take Rob Snyder over Steven Yuen, but Oscar Isaac and Mahershal Ali would do fine. So th that's my thoughts. Team one, let me know what you guys think about these teams down below in the comments. Thank you for your unique fan casting. All right, next up, we have Jack's fan casts. 
Let's take a look. Vince Vaughn for Harvey Bullock and Nathan Fillion. I like both these guys. I think we've done this matchup before. Vince Vaughn is my choice. For Catwoman, we see Isaac Gonzalez and Marina Bakarin from Deadpool 2. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Marina Bakarin. Now for Poison Ivy, we have Amelia Clark and Natalie Dormer. I'm going to go with Natalie Dormer. For Scarecrow, we have Rami Malek and Adam Driver. I am going to go with Adam Driver for this one. I think Adam's a great choice for this one. He, he can totally pull off that creepy, like, doctor, fear monger or whatever. I think he would be totally awesome in the role. Adam Driver. Penguin, we have Nick Frost and Paul Giamatti. So this is where it starts to get spicy for me. Because Nick Frost, probably a top three candidate for the role. But Paul Giamatti is a wild card. I think Paul Giamatti would be amazing. He'd be absolutely amazing in the role. Not just because he was an amazing Spider-Man, which was not a great role for him, but I do think that Penguin, it would be spot on. He would nail this role. Paul Giamatti is my choice. Let me know what you guys think down below. Two-Face, we've got Oscar Isaac and Ian Grafud. Now this is interesting because Ian Grafud does look like he could play that role. I would probably want him to maybe like bulk up a little bit. He's got kind of like an and this is probably why he was so good as Mr. Fantastic. He has kind of an awkward, thin body to begin with. So, but Oscar Isaac, man, that guy can act. And and I think he would do really well as Two-Face. The intimidation he can pull off is just immense. The guy's amazing. I love Oscar Isaac. He's got my vote. And for Riddler, we have Eddie Redmayne and David Tennant from Doctor Who and Good Omens. I like Eddie Redmayne, but for this role, I'm gonna have to go with David Tennant. I would just hope they would give him those big sideburns, give him those big, you know, like, just like in that image right there, I think David Tennant would pull off that Riddler really, really well, so let's do that. And next we have Mr. Freeze, Hugo Weaving from Captain America the First Avenger and Lord of the Rings Return of the King, and Jason Isaacs from The Patriot and The Oa. Now, both these guys, really, really good. Jason Isaacs plays a villain probably better than anybody. Seriously, like he's one of the best villain actors on earth. But you also need someone that can really like pull out the compassion, you know, pull on your heartstrings. I think I still give it to Jason Isaacs, but Hugo Weaving is a great second option. Great choice. I like these, both of them. Next, Bane. We have Javier Bardem as a voice and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson for body. I think this one was probably intended to be a pairing, like have Thor play the body and have Javier Bardem voice it, which is a great idea. But if I have to choose one, I'm gonna go Javier Bardem. So Vince Vaughn, Isaac Gonzalez, Amelia Clark, Rami Malek, Nick Frost, Oscar Isaac, Eddie Redman, Hugo Weaving, and Javier Bardem for team one. For team two, we have Nathan Fillion, Marina Bakar, Natalie Dormer, Adam Driver, Paul Giamatti, Ian Gruffa, David Tennant, Jason Isaacs, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. This might surprise you guys, but I am going to go with Team 2. I think Team 2 is, in my opinion, um, there's some people that I just must have for Team 2, and the rest of them are so good that I think that they would be good enough to outweigh the other team. So in my opinion, I like Team 2. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, next up, Mr. Funcaster. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. Harvey Bullock, we have Matt LeBlanc from Friends and Joey, and Ving Rhames from Pulp Fiction and Dawn of the Dead. All right, I really like Matt LeBlanc in this role. I think that Matt LeBlanc from Friends would be able to play this role, especially now, like, now that he's got a little bit more of well-rounded acting, you know, he's done a few other things other than Friends and Joey, um, which was a spinoff from Friends. I think that Matt LeBlanc would be able to play that rough, you know, like, hey, what do you do? What do you mean? You, you know, what do you mean you think it's me? Huh? What are you doing? You know, like that kind of thing. He would be able to play that really well. I, I would love to see him play that. Not, Ving Rangs would do really well, but Matt LeBlanc has my vote. For Catwoman, Rosie Huntington Whiteley from Mad Max Fury Road and Transformers Dark of the Moon, and Gugu Mbatha Ra from Belle and A Wrinkle in Time. I think for Gugu Mbatha Ra, um, she was one of my top picks to play Storm in the MCU, but I haven't had her cast for anything in the DCU just yet. I'll be honest, I think be between the two of these, I'll probably go with Rosie Huntington Whiteley for Catwoman. But Gugu is a great actress, and I think that she deserves to get a really good role in the DCU. I just don't think it's this one. So Poison Ivy, we have Emily Blunt from Mary Poppins and the Devil Wears Prada, and Ruth Wilson from The Affair and Luther. Between the two of these, I'd go with Emily Blunt uh, to play Poison Ivy. 
So let me know what you guys want. Scarecrow, we have Riz Ahmed from Venom and Rogue One A Star Wars Story and Steven McIntosh from Luther and Underworld Evolution. This guy is really good at playing evil. Both of these guys are. Riz Ahmed would be really cool, but I'm going to go with Steven McIntosh for this one. I think that's a really cool choice. Very outside the box. You don't see that one very often, but I think that is, it's well deserved and well understood why he should do that role. He fits the role. All right, next up, Ricky Gervais from The Office UK and Afterlife. And we also have Dermo Crowley from Luther and Return of the Jedi. For Penguin, I'm going to go ahead and say I think Ricky Gervais should get the role. Now, I see what you're looking at with the hooked nose for Dermo Crowley, Luther, and Return of the Jedi. Um, he can play someone that is that high society, older person. But I'm going to still stick with Ricky Gervais because I would like to see him get a much more serious role and then just crush it. You know, break out of just the, the one-tone acting career he has. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick there. So let's keep looking. Two-Face, we have John Krasinski from The Office in 13 Hours and Matt Damon from Jason Bourne and Thor Ragnarok. Wow, both of these are really, really cool. Both incredibly talented actors. I don't know anyone who doesn't like Matt Damon, but I think John Krasinski would be much more intimidating to see play this role in the off from you know from 13 hours the office you guys saw um a quiet place i think it would be really cool to see john krasinski play a role that is this sinister this evil you know and uh i would love that i would love to see that so that's my vote next up we have riddler joe keery from stranger things and molly's game and alden ehrenreich from beautiful creatures and solo a star wars story now joe keery is really good he's up and coming a lot of people have really liked him in stranger things but i'm gonna go with alden ehrenreich um, beautiful creatures in a Star Wars story. I really liked Solo. I'm one of the few I know. Um, if you guys like Solo, let me know down in the comments that I'm not alone because <laughs> it feels like I am, but I really liked Solo. Most people that I, that I know that don't like Solo actually didn't see it. They never saw Solo. Most people hate on Solo. They never saw it. A lot of people who have seen it said he was really good or they liked it or it was okay. No, almost no one who saw it said it sucked. And so I want to I want to know if you guys saw it, but I really liked Alden in that movie. I didn't think I was gonna. I went in skeptical, but I liked it, and I think he's good. So I think he'd do the role well. All right, next up, Mr. Freeze. We've got Daniel Craig from Skyfall and Casino Royale, and Mark Rylance from Bridge of Spies and Ready Player One. Mark Rylance is a really good actor, but I like Daniel Craig for this one. I think he would do really well, and I would love to see him in that role. So, and it gives him a chance to play a bad guy. That isn't a bad guy. You know what I mean? Mr. Freeze is a bad guy that really isn't a bad guy when you understand him. So that's that's one of the cool things about him. So it gives him, he gets to play like, you know, someone that's totally BA, you know, keeping the channel PG, but at the same time is relatable, is understandable, and his motivations were, were genuinely human. You know what I mean? And so it's it's totally understandable on that level. So I like that. I like Mr. Freeze because of that. And I think Daniel Craig would do a really good job. Next, Bane, we have Gabriel Luna, yes, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Matador, and Giancarlo Esposito, again, voice from Breaking Bad and Once Upon a Time. Giancarlo Esposito has an amazing voice. I think that his voice is just captivating. I would love to have him play Bane, but Gabriel Luna, does in fact speak Spanish. I don't know. I think I'm going to go ahead and say I would imagine Giancarlo Esposito does speak Spanish, but Gabriel Luna, uh, I know does. And his work on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was amazing. I can't wait to see him in the next Terminator. And um, even though he's not the biggest guy, if he's voicing the role, yes, I would say give it to Gabriel Luna. But for me, both guys are a win. Giancarlo could 100% do it. So next, let's take a look at the teams. Matt LeBlanc, Rosie Huntington-Whiteley, uh, Emily Blunt, Riz Ahmed, Ricky Gervais, John Krasinski, Joe Keery, Daniel Craig, and Gabriel Luna Voice. Next, we have Ving Rhames, Gugu Mbathura, Ruth Wilson, Stephen McIntosh, Dermo Crowley, Matt Damon, Alden Ehrenreich, Mark Rylance, and Giancarlo Esposito. For me, almost entirely across the board, I'm gonna go with team one. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, if you guys agree with me, or if you guys like team two better. Next, let's take a look at FanCast Power. Welcome to the FanCasting Summit. 
Let's take a look. Harvey Bullock. We have David Harbour from Stranger Things and Hellboy. We also have Nathan Fillion from Firefly and The Rookie. Between the two of these, I think I'm going to go with David Harbour. So then for Catwoman, Ruby Rose, Orange is the New Black, and Arrow. And we also have Jamie Alexander from Blind Spot and Thor The Dark World. For these choices, I would take Jamie Alexander. Next, we have... Poison Ivy, Lady Gaga, A Star Is Born, American Horror Story, and also Evan Rachel Wood from Westworld and True Blood. Between the two of these, I would take Evan Rachel Wood. Next, we have for Scarecrow, Jackie Earl Haley from Watchmen and the Bad News Bears, and also Mads Mikkelsen from Doctor Strange and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I love Mads Mikkelsen. He's one of my favorites. I think he should play Doctor Doom. I think that he was wasted as Caecilius. I think he did a good job, but no one cares about that character at all. So I think that it would be really cool to have him here. But Jack Earl Haley is also a really good choice. I'm going to go with Mads Mikkelsen. Next, let's take a look at Penguin, Andy Serkis from the Star Wars Force Awakens and Black Panther, and also Paul Giamatti from Big Fat Liar and Billions. Given the choice between them, I think I'm going to uh, go with the wild card. Paul Giamatti. Next, let's take a look at Two Face. We've got John Hamm from Tag and Baby Driver, and also Michael Fassbender from Dark Phoenix and Assassin's Creed. Given the choice between these two, I'm gonna have to go with the person I think is the more superior actor, because both of them visually look perfect for the role. Like on looks, you look at them, that's totally Two Face for both of them. But the superior actor, in my opinion, is Michael Fassbender. I'm gonna go with Fassbender. Next. For Riddler, we have Simon Pegg from Star Trek and Hot Fuzz and James McAvoy from Glass and X-Men Dark Phoenix. For Riddler, if it wasn't James McAvoy he was going up against, I would have picked Simon Pegg. However, because it is James McAvoy, I'm going to go with James McAvoy. He is great for this role. He can play crazy when he needs to. He can play zany. Uh, he can play hyper-intelligent. He can do it all. I love James McAvoy, the, by far the superior actor. All right, next, Mr. Freeze. We have Mark Strong from Shazam and Green Lantern and also Ben Mendelsohn from Captain Marvel and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I love this pick. I really like Ben Mendelsohn. I loved him in Captain Marvel. He was the best part of Captain Marvel, in my opinion. Um, and then Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, he was also fantastic. Love the guy, love his work. Mark Strong would have had my choice were he not already in the DCU in Shazam. So for me, it goes to Ben Mendelsohn, not just by default, but because I think he would do really well. And uh, so Bane, we have Javier Bardem from No Country for Old Men and Loving Pablo, and Dave Bautista from Hotel Artemis and Guardians of the Galaxy. Given the choice between the two of these, I would choose Dave Bautista, and I think he would do uh, the best role in this. So. That's my choice. Now let's take a look at the teams. First is David Harbour, Ruby Rose, Lady Gaga, Jackie Earl Haley, uh, Andy Serkis, John Hamm, Simon Pegg, Mark Strong, and Javier Bardem. For team two, we have Nathan Fillion, Jamie Alexander, Evan Rachel Wood, Mads Mikkelsen, Paul Giamatti, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, Ben Mendelsohn, and Dave Bautista. All the way across the board, I love team two. I really like team one, but I love team two. So for me, that's easy. I'm going team two. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, let's take a look at Connor's fan cast. Welcome back to the fan casting summit. First up, we have for Harvey Bullock, Ben Foster from Hell or High Water. Fantastic movie. Fantastic acting. It's a little crude. Uh, it's not family friendly. But also, he's from X-Men Last Stand, where he played Angel. That was a long time ago. And Russell Crowe, Man of Steel and Gladiator. Between the two of these, for Harvey Dent, as much as I like Ben Foster, I'm going to go with Russell Crowe for this one. I really do really like Ben Foster, though. Great choice. Also, Catwoman, we have Carmen Ejogo, if that's how you say it, from Selma and True Detective, and Nicole Kidman from Aquaman and Big Little Lies. Um, between the two of these, I'm going to go with Carmen Ejogo. That's my choice right there. So next, we have Charlize Theron. Uh, for Poison Ivy, Atomic Blonde and Mad Max Fury Road, and Vicky Creeps, or Cripes, I don't know how you say that, from Phantom Thread and Hannah. Uh, between the two of these, it's kind of easy for me. I'm going to go with Charlize Theron for Poison Ivy. 
Next, for Scarecrow, we have Adam Driver from Star Wars The Force Awakens and Black Klansman, and Caleb Landry Dr Jones from X-Men First Class. He played Banshee, in case you guys didn't remember. And also, Get Out. I really like that guy, but I'm gonna go with Adam Driver. All right, next we have for Penguin, Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, Now You See Me Too, and Jonah Hill from War Dogs and Maniac. What I really like about this is that you kept in mind the height of Penguin. Penguin is supposed to be really short. I think he's supposed to be like 5'2", five, five if I'm not mistaken. He might be even shorter than that. But Daniel Radcliffe is 5'5". Five, five. That's really short. It's one of the shortest talented actors that we have out there. But Jonah Hill from War Dogs and Maniac is also really good for the role. I think that I would probably still go Jonah Hill, but I like that you picked Daniel Radcliffe. He could do the role. Um, we've just never seen him with any body fat ever. So I'm going to go with uh, Jonah Hill. I think he's a lot closer to the role. And I think he looks a little bit more like the role too. Two-Face, Walter Goggins, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Sons of Anarchy, and Ken Watanabe from Batman Begins and Godzilla King of the Monsters. I really like Ken Watanabe. Sorry, I keep messing up his name. Ken Watanabe. Um, but Walter Goggins would have my vote for this one. I think he's just, he's crazy. And I think he could play crazy really, really well. So I'm gonna go there. Next for Riddler, we have James Franco from 127 Hours and Spider-Man 2. And then also Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta and Get Out. Also a good actor, Lakeith, but I would definitely go with James Franco. I think James Franco is a great actor. He gets typecast a lot. He, him and him and uh, Seth Rogen keep making their own crazy films. So, you know, he kind of typecasts himself. At the same time, very talented actor, and I would love to see him play the Riddler. Next up, we have Mr. Freeze, Christopher Plummer from National Treasure and the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and Paul Dano from Prisoners and 12 Years a Slave. Now, I think... The trouble here is that I think Christopher Plummer might be getting close to too old for playing Mr. Freeze, except that's also not true if you consider that we've chosen Patrick Stewart many, many times. So I'm going to go with Christopher Plummer, but I do like that you picked Paul Dano. I don't think Paul Dano's great for the role, but I'm going to say Christopher Plummer. All right. Bane, we have Javier Bardem, No Country for Old Men, and Skyfall, and Florian Montianu from Creed 2 and Bogot. Man, Cr Florian Montianu would be amazing in the role. Um, he's got the physique we're looking for. He's got the size you're looking for. And if you keep him in the mask, no one's going to care. However, Javier Bardem could voice the role. You could just get a CGI Bane, which I think is probably where we need to go next for Bane. Technology's moved on to the degree that we can use that, we can rely on it. I think I'm gonna go with Javier Bardem, but I really respect that you picked Florian Montiani. That's really good. Next, let's take a look at the teams. First up, Ben Foster, Carmen Ejogo, Charlie's Throne, Adam Driver, Daniel Radcliffe, Walter Goggins, James Franco, Christopher Plummer, and Javier Bardem. Really like that team. Team two, Russell Crowe, Nicole Kidman, Vicky Creeps, Caleb Landry Jones, Jonah Hill, Ken Watanabe, Lakeith Stanfield, Paul Dano, and Florian Montiano. For me, this one's easy. I'm gonna go with team one, but let me know if you guys think I'm crazy or if I'm not understanding the character choices. I wanna hear from you guys. Talk to me in the comments. Let's get going. Next up, we have FanCast Forever. Welcome back to the FanCasting Summit and we know that you also have an edits page, which we would like to promote here. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram as well. Um, follow his art page, which is called edits forever. It's underscore edits, double underscore forever, double underscore. And this will be the image. So find him there, but let's take a look. So for Harvey Bullock, we have Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad and Power Rangers. We also have an edit here from his edit page. So take a look there. We can see Brian Cranston in the role. That looks really good to me. He does look a lot like Harvey Bullock. Now, most people would say this looks like Jim Gordon, but nevertheless, I think that he could also pull that off. And then he also has, as his other choice for Harvey Bullock, is Ben Barnes, who I think is probably a little bit on the young side to play Harvey Bullock, but nevertheless, my choice will go to Brian Cranston either way. So next up, we have Catwoman, Miranda Bakarin from Deadpool and Gotham. We have an art piece here from the edits page, which is here. We see a Miranda Bakarin as Catwoman. That's really good. I like that. Great art, my friend. And then also Isaac Gonzalez from Baby Driver and Alita Battle Angel. So 
between the two of these, I would go with Marina McCarran, and that's a great edit, my friend. Good job. Next, Fancast Forever cho chooses for Poison Ivy, Emma Stone from Maniac and La La Land, and Isla Fisher from Hot Rod and Now You See Me. And there is an art piece for Isla Fisher. So there it is. We see her there as Poison Ivy. I like what we're seeing here. So I'm going to go with Isla Fisher. Next up, we have Scarecrow, Adrian Brody from King Kong and the Pianist, and Cillian Murphy from Batman Begins and Dunkirk. I really like both of these guys in the role, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose Adrian Brody. We already got to see Cillian Murphy play, Bat play in Batman Begins. I wanna see Adrian Brody play this character, and he's one of my top choices for the role anyway, so Adrian Brody has my vote. Next up for Penguin, we have Nick Frost from Shaun of the Dead and Into the Badlands, and Jonah Hill from Maniacs and War Dogs. Um, based on the image that you've shown us here, I like Nick Frost, but I do prefer Jonah Hill in the role. But it's kind of a coin toss for me, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna go with Nick Frost with this one. And for Two-Face, we have Daniel Craig from Skyfall and Casino Royale. I believe we have an art piece from the edit page here, which is there. Nice edit, we see some wounds there, see an open mouth. That's pretty cool, I like that quick edit, that's good stuff. I like the he burned his hand as well, that's nice. And then also John Hamm from Tag and Baby Driver. Both of these would be really good, but I, I think I still prefer John Hamm for the role, but that's a really cool edit you did for Daniel Craig, and I think he would also be good for the role. Next, we have for Riddler, David Tennant, Doctor Who and Jessica Jones, and Jim Parsons from The Big Bang Theory, and hidden figures and I believe we have an art piece for Jim Parsons as well there we go and that looks pretty good I think that he I think that he would do a really good job it would in my opinion I think Jim Parsons would perform in a way that would harken back to the Adam West era and I think David Tennant would be a little bit closer to the Arkham Knight games so in my opinion I think I would go with David Tennant so um, and I love the Adam West series by the way so Mr. Freeze, we have Mark Strong, who is currently in the DCEU in Shazam and Green Lantern. And we also have Patrick Stewart from X-Men Days of Future Past and Logan. Because Mark Strong is already taken, he is the most superior actor for that role, by the way. In my opinion, I know the other, the other most perfect person for the role is Patrick Stewart, but Mark Strong is probably the alpha casting for this role. However, he's taken. Patrick Stewart is also an alpha. I'm gonna go with Patrick Stewart. All right, next up for Bane, we've got Dave Bautista from Hotel Artemis and Guardians of the Galaxy. And then we also have Half Thor Julius Bjornsson from Kickboxer Retaliation and Game of Thrones. He is known as The Mountain. Both guys are great for the role, but I'm going to go with Dave Bautista. All right, now let's take a look at these choices. So, first up, Brian Cranston, Miranda Bakarin, Emma Stone, Adrian Brody, Nick Frost, Daniel Craig, David Tennant. Mark Strong, and Dave Batista. And then following that, we have Ben Barnes, Isaac Gonzalez, Isla Fisher, Cillian Murphy, Jonah Hill, John Hamm, Jim Parsons, Patrick Stewart, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. I'm gonna go with team one, but you guys let me know what you guys think down below. I really like a lot of the actors chosen for these roles on both sides, but team one I think has it for me. So let me know what you guys think down below. All right, and for FanCast Infinity, welcome back to the FanCasting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. Harvey Bullock, we have Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec and Deadwood, and Nathan Fillion. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Nathan Fillion, but I really like Nick Offerman. That's a cool choice. Way to think outside the box. Love it. Next up, Catwoman, Miranda Bakarin from Deadpool 2 in Gotham, or sorry, Deadpool and Deadpool 2 in Gotham, and Emmy Rossum from Shameless and the Phantom of the Opera. I'm gonna go with Miranda Bakarin. I think she's great for the role. I think she looks the part all around. My choice. Next up, Jessica Chastain from Poison Ivy from The Help and Dark Phoenix. And also, Natalie Dormer from Game of Thrones and Captain America the First Avenger. I think both of these ladies are really, really good for the role. I'm going to go with Jessica Chastain for this one. Next up, for Scarecrow, we have Andrew Scott from Sherlock and Spectre and Rami Malek from Mr. Robot and Bohemian Rhapsody. I think both of these guys' acting chops have been cut from the same cloth. However, Andrew Scott might have my role for this one for for scarecrow i really like that guy even though i would prefer him as the riddler i think i'd still choose him as the scarecrow for this one next up we've got penguin 
Mark Shepard from Supernatural and Leverage to play Penguin, or Peter Dinklage from Avengers Infinity War and Game of Thrones. I do think that Mark Shepard's a good actor, but between the two of these guys, I think I'm gonna go with Peter Dinklage. Next up, Two-Face, we've got Tom Ellis from Lucifer and Rush and Oscar Isaac from Star Wars The Force Awakens and X-Men Apocalypse. I think Tom Ellis is a really cool choice, but I'm gonna go with Oscar Isaac. I really like Oscar Isaac. I think he'd crush that role. Next, Riddler, James McAvoy, X-Men Dark Phoenix and Glass, and Zachary Quinto from Star Trek and American Horror Story. If you had chosen Zachary Quinto for, say, Scarecrow, I might have chosen him for that one. However, in this case, I'm gonna go with James McAvoy. All right, next up for Mr. Freeze, this is cool. We got Paul Bettany from Avengers Infinity War and Solo, a Star Wars story, which was underappreciated. And we have Peter Capaldi from Doctor Who and Christopher Robin, who, in my opinion, doesn't quite look like Mr. Freeze to me. He's close, very, very close. But I think if I had to choose between the two of these, I think I'm going with Paul Bettany. And I really like Paul Bettany, and I think he would do a really good job. All right, next up we've got Bane, Dominic Purcell from The Flash and CW, and uh, Prison Break, and also Ron Perlman from Hellboy and Pacific Rim. If you were just gonna voice him, I would say maybe give it to Ron Perlman. But also, Dominic Purcell's voice is just scary. Like, he's got a really intimidating voice, and he's also, got the physique to play Bane. I would like to see Dominic Purcell get the role. Next, let's take a look at the teams. We've got Nick Offerman, Marina McCarran, Jessica Chastain, Andrew Scott, Mark Shepard, Tom Ellis, James McAvoy, Paul Bettany, and Dominic Purcell. After that, we have Harvey Bullock, Nathan Fillion, Emmy Rossum, Natalie Dormer, Rami Malek, Peter Dinklage, Oscar Isaac, Zachary Quinto, Peter Capaldi, and Ron Perlman. I really, really like these lineups. Both of these, I think, are winner teams. It doesn't really matter to me at this point which one we go with. I'm gonna say team one. Uh, it's very, very close. It's basically a coin flip for me. What do you guys like? Do you like team one or team two better? Let's talk about it in the comments. All right, guys. Fancasts 24-7. Finally got that right. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look. Harvey Bullock. We have Vince Vaughn and Matthew Fox from Lost and We Are Marshall. I like that you, you looked at this guy for the role, but I think Vince Vaughn is the guy for this one. I think Vince Vaughn wins this one. Between the two of these actors, I really like Vince. All right, next, Catwoman, Isaac Gonzalez, and Olivia Wilde for both of these. I really like both of these actresses, but I'm gonna go with Isaac Gonzalez for Catwoman. Next, we have Poison Ivy, Isla Fisher, and Natalie Dormer. I'm gonna go with, this one's tough, um, especially after seeing the fan art for uh, Isla Fisher from Edits Forever, but maybe uh, Natalie Dormer, I'm gonna say, Natalie Dormer. Scarecrow, Jackie Earl Haley uh, from Watchmen and the Bad News Bears, and Adrian Brody from King Kong and The Pianist. Between the two of these, they're both total creeps. <laughs> they both play creepy characters. I am going with Adrian Brody. Next, for Penguin, we have Peter Dinklage and Andy Serkis. We've done this matchup before. I like Andy Serkis, but let me know what you guys like down below. All right, for Two-Face, we have Matthew McConaughey and Edward Norton, again from The Incredible Hulk. Um, I really like both these guys, but for this role, it's clear to me that it's Matthew McConaughey. I really like him for the role. Next, for Riddler, we're looking at Neil Patrick Harris from How I Met Your Mother and A Series of Unfortunate Events and Matthew Gray Goobler from Criminal Minds and How to Be a Serial Killer. Both of those are great, great choices. Matthew Gray Goobler is someone that I had not considered that I think, really, I think he would be wonderful. Um, I think he would knock the rule out of the park. He'd be kind of like scary. He'd be entrancing. Um, but Neil Patrick Harris, I think he's just off the charts for this role. But I'm gonna, for this one, I'm gonna give it to Matthew Gray Goobler. Next up, Mr. Freeze, Hugo Weaving, and Kelsey Grammer from Troll Hunters and X-Men The Last Stand, also from Frasier. So I like Kelsey Grammer, but I'm gonna give this one to Hugo Weaving. I really like Kelsey, but I think Hugo Weaving is what we need for Mr. Freeze in this matchup. So Bane, we're looking at Javier Bardem and Dave Bautista. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Dave Bautista. All right, now to look at the teams. Both of these teams I really, really like, but let's take a look at them and then we'll pick. First, 
Vince Vaughn, Isaac Gonzalez, Isla Fisher, Jackie Earl Haley, Peter Dinklage, Matthew McConaughey, Neil Patrick Harris, Hugo Weaving, and Javier Bardem. Following that, we have Matthew Fox, Olivia Wilde, Natalie Dormer, Adrian Brody, Andy Serkis, Edward Norton, Matthew Gray Goobler, Kelsey Grammer, and Dave Batista. Wow, what a lineup. Man, for these, it's really tough. Oh gosh, it's almost a coin toss, really. There's like, it's almost an even amount of people I like on both sides, and then a couple people I would switch on both sides. I think it would be team one for me, but let me know what you guys like down below in the comments, all right? So let's keep moving. Fancast Frenzy, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look. We have, for Harvey Dent, I'm uh, sorry, for Harvey Bullock, we have Gary Oldman from The Dark Knight and Darkest Hour, and Dean Norris from Breaking Bad and Under the Dome. Now, Gary Oldman is one of the best actors alive at this time. He's one of the top. But I would say Dean Norris, I think, better fits the role. So I'm gonna go with Dean Norris. Catwoman, we have Isaac Gonzalez for Baby Driver and Alita Battle Angel, and Ruby Rose from Arrow, CW, and Orange is the New Black. Between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with Isaac Gonzalez, but I do like Ruby Rose. I think she would be really good in the role, but for me, it's Isaac. All right, so then for Poison Ivy, we have Marion Cotillard, Co sorry, I don't know how to say that, from Inception and Little White Lies, and also Scarlett Johansson from Ghost in the Shell and Avengers Endgame. Look, here's what I think. If you're gonna have Poison Ivy and you can get Scarlett Johansson, you should get Scarlett Johansson. That's my opinion. You might, you might feel differently, you might like Marion more, for me, it's Scarlett Johansson. All right, Scarecrow, we've got, again, Aiden Gillen from The Dark Knight Rises and Lorna Dune, again, I mentioned that earlier, it's just great, it's crazy, crazy movie. Does not end the way you think it'll end. And uh, Sean Harris, the, Borg the Borgia, or the Borg, how do you say that, Borgia? The Borgias, and Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Um, Sean Harris is really, really cool, but I don't know if there's anyone that will, will do it play a villain better than Aiden Gillen. Uh, that guy, that guy can play a character full of hate, full of evil, full of fear. And that guy I think is Aiden Gillen. He's my top. So let's go there. So now for this one, again, another guy I did not think of total. He was a wild card, but it fits. It's the, it's perfect. If you want mob boss, crazy mob boss penguin is Joe Pesci from Goodfellas and Home Alone. If you guys don't remember, it was him and Marv, right? You're like, hey Marv, what are you doing? You know, like, get, get back in the van. You know, the cops are coming or something like that. He would be like, the VCR, let's go get a VCR. It was him, Joe Pesci from Home Alone. And then Andy Serkis, of course, is a, a top contender. But Joe Pesci, yeah, you just won my vote. Joe Pesci, boom, all day. He should play Penguin. That's a great casting, dude. Good job. Um, so Two-Face, Gabriel Mox, I don't know how to say that. Uh, suits and the spirit and also Dominic Monaghan from Lost and Lord of the Rings Return of the King I think Dominic Dominic Monaghan's great but I'm gonna give it to Gabriel Mock because I don't think Dominic Monaghan has has that like intimidation factor you know what I mean because he's kind of a smaller dude um, he just doesn't seem intimidating to me so I'm gonna go with Gabriel Mock a little bit more intimidating not very intimidating but a little bit more so that's my choice Next for Riddler, Andrew Scott from Sherlock and Spectre and Jake Gyllenhaal from Nightcrawler and Spider-Man Far From Home. Man, this is a matchup right here because I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I think Jake Gyllenhaal would do a really good job playing almost anything, really. But, um, and by the way, Mysterio and Riddler are kind of similar. They're both deceivers. They're both hyper-intellectual. Um, they're tricksters. But I'm going to give it to Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott should play the Riddler. He was born to play the Riddler. All right, next up, Ed Harris for Mr. Freeze or Nicolaj Coster Waldo. I think that this would be done well by either of these gentlemen, but I'm going Ed Harris. And for Bane, we have Javier Bardem and Clancy Brown from Thor Ragnarok and Warcraft. I'm gonna go for Javier Bardem uh, for this one. And let's take a look at the teams. First up, Gary Oldman, Isaac Gonzalez, Marion Cotillard, Cotillard or whatever, Aiden Gillen, <laughs> Joe Pesci, Gabriel Mock, Andrew Scott, Ed Harris, and Javier Bardem. And for team two, we have Dean Har Dean Norris, sorry, Ruby Rose, Scarlett Johansson, Sean Harris, Andy Serkis, Dominic Monaghan, Jake Gyllenhaal, Nicolaj Coster Waldo, and Clancy Brown. I really like team two, and I really like team one. I'm gonna go with team one. 
because there's no way I can pass up uh, Aiden Gillen, Joe Pesci, Andrew Scott, Ed Harris, Javier Bardem, Isaac Gonzalez. Um, those guys in those roles is unmissable. I can't miss that. So that's great. Let me know what you guys think down below. And now we are on Epic Fancasts. Welcome to the Fancasting Summit. We have first up Michael Chiklis from Gotham and The Shield to play Harvey Bullock. And then John Goodman from 10 Cloverfield Lane and Kong Skull Island. I like both of these, but I'm going to go with Michael Chiklis to play the role. For Catwoman, we're looking at Katie McGrath from Supergirl CW and Jurassic World. And also Ruby Rose from Arrow CW and Orange is the New Black. Between the two of these, I would go Katie McGrath. I think she is probably the best part of Supergirl, the show. And I think that her character is probably one of the most interesting parts of that show anyway. So I like Katie McGrath, I think she'd be great. Next, let's take a look at Poison Ivy. We have Bryce Dallas Howard from Jurassic World and Spider-Man 3. And we also have Karen Gillan from Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle and Avengers Endgame. Both of these ladies would be really good in the role. I like Karen Gillan a lot, but I'm gonna go with Bryce Dallas Howard. I think she's better for the role of Poison Ivy. All right, and next we have Scarecrow. Alan Tudyk from Doom Patrol and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Dane DeHaan from The, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 and The Kid. Both of these guys can play evil. They can play a creep. They can play a lot of different things, both very, very, very talented and incredibly versatile. However, if you're going to go with a young Scarecrow, I would go Dane DeHaan, but I don't think Dane DeHaan is old enough to play the Scarecrow that I'm looking for. Maybe you guys disagree, but I like Alan Tudyk for this role a little bit more. So I'm gonna go with Alan Tudyk. Um, next is Penguin. We have Paul Giamatti from Billions and Big Fat Liar and Andy Serkis, who I really like for the role. Avengers Age of Ultron and Black Panther. Now that being said, I'm gonna go with the wild card, Paul Giamatti. I didn't think of him before, but he is great. He would be awesome in the role. I think that we should get either Paul Giamatti or Andy Serkis for the role. Next, James Marsden, we have X-Men uh, and Westworld, and then also Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible Fallout, and Edge of Tomorrow. Both these guys would be really nice to play the role. I can see Tom Cruise playing this role. I just don't know if a lot of people are gonna take him that seriously. I like Tom Cruise a lot, but I'm gonna go with James Marsden. I also like him a lot, and I think that it would be really, really good to see him there. So let's take a look at Riddler. Neil Patrick Harris from How I Met Your Mother in a Series of Unfortunate Events and David Tennant from Doctor Who and Jessica Jones. I'm gonna go with Neil Patrick Harris. I think he's I think he's just born for the role, but David Tennant, I mean, just look at the guy. Like look at the guy and then look at the Riddler. Look at the guy and then look at the Riddler. That's pretty spot on. That's like really close. For that type of Riddler, for that specific type, he's almost perfect. I think that Neil Patrick Harris could be any kind of Riddler you want him to be. Um, so yeah, I think Neil Patrick Harris is the guy. Next up for Mr. Freeze, we're looking at Bruce Willis from G.I. Joe Retaliation and Glass, also every Die Hard, and then uh, Ralph Fiennes from Spectre and Schindler's List and the Harry Potter franchise. Both of these would be really, really good. As much as I think most people are gonna choose Ralph Fiennes, I'm gonna choose Bruce Willis for this one. The reason being is that I don't see Mr. Freeze as a pure villain. He's, he's a guy that's doing some really crazy stuff as a reaction to crazy stuff happening to him and his wife. And he he's willing to stop as soon as, stop being a villain entirely. He's not about riches. He's trying to save his wife. You know what I mean? And that's something I think Bruce Willis would pull off maybe a little bit better than Ralph Fiennes is just playing a villain that's not pure evil. He's, he's just willing to do dark, evil things, killing people to save the love of his life, to save his wife, even at the cost of his own life. So I think that's pretty cool. Almost in a way, like in a sinister kind of way, it's kind of noble. You know what I mean? It's relatable, it's human. And Batman even feels that way. So I think Bruce Willis would be good for that role. Next up, Bane. We have Nathan Jones from Mad Max Fury Road and Troy. Guy's freaking huge. And Bill Goldberg, also freaking huge, from The Longest Yard and Con Man. Both guys, if you're gonna have them there, I think I'd choose Nathan Jones as this one, but Bill Goldberg would be great too. I just think that 
um, Nathan Jones is probably a little bit better for that. So Nathan Jones, good call. Also, let's take a look at the teams. First up, Michael Chiklis, Katie McGrath, Bryce Dallas Howard, Alan Tudyk, Paul Giamatti, James Mars, and Neil Patrick Harris, Bruce Willis, and Nathan Jones. And team two is John Goodman, Ruby Rose, Karen Gillan, Dane DeHaan, Andy Serkis, Tom Cruise, David Tennant, Ralph Fiennes, and Bill Goldberg. I love, I love every single person on this, on both teams for these roles. But I, I favored every single person on team one for the for the role. I love your team one. I'm going with team one. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And we have fan casting is dope. Sick name. Love the name. And a sick profile pick as well. Love the Green Goblin. All right, so fan casting is dope says Harvey Bullock should be David Harbour or Josh Brolin. Between the two of these guys, and I like that you picked Josh Brolin. That's pretty cool. But I'm going to go with David Harbour for this one. And then for Catwoman, let's take a look. Marina Bakarin from Deadpool and Gotham and Evangeline Lilly from The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ooh, this one's tough. I love Evangeline Lilly. I think she's great, but I'm going to go with Marina Bikarin for this one. I think she's just cut for the role entirely. Um, so next, Poison Ivy. We're looking at Br Jessica Chastain and Bryce Dallas Howard. Given the choice between the two of these, I am going to go with Bryce Dallas Howard. Surprise, surprise. And from Scarecrow, we have Adam Driver and Michael C. Hall from Dexter. Given the choice between the two of these, I would go with Adam Driver. Now for Penguin, we have Andy Serkis and Alfred Molina from Amazing Sp from Spider-Man 2 and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Given the choice between the two of these, I'm going to go with Alfred Molina. That's a surprise, right? I love Andy Serkis. 100%. I think he could and should get the role. But so should Alfred Molina. I go with Alfred. All right, next we have Harvey Dent, Two-Face. We have K Henry Cavill. For Mission Impossible Fallout and Man of Steel. And also Teddy Sears from 24 Legacy and The Flash CW. These are really cool. I like these because both these dudes are macho. Both these dudes are men. And Henry Cavill is currently in the DCEU. The rumors that he was fired were never verified, never proven. They were run from uh, a source that is supposed to be credible. But they, they were making their own speculations based off of hearsay. That was what the whole thing was started about. It has not been proven to be true, and they've said the opposite. They've said that their working relationship has not changed. So, Henry Cavill is still in the DCEU. Uh, I think he would do really good as Two-Face, but I'm gonna go Teddy Sears, because I also think he'd do a great job as Two-Face. And I think that, you know, you can't choose someone who's already in the DCEU, so that makes it easy. All right, next up, we have Riddler. Toe for Grace from Black Klansman and Interstellar. Everyone remembers him from Amazing Spider-Man three when he when he was cast as venom which was a total miscast he's a good actor he's a really good actor he's just not right for venom i wouldn't cast him as bane but i would cast him as the riddler you know what i mean and then there's also he's going up against james mcavoy that's the other thing so james mcavoy probably one of the best actors one of the best actors alive but uh i like topher grace i think topher grace because he's the wild card here i'm gonna give him that one but Everybody knows James McAvoy would be really good in the role of Riddler. So I'm going to do Toe for Grace. I'm going to give that guy some love. Next up, we've got Mr. Freeze, Ben Kingsley from Iron Man 3 and Schindler's List, and also Brian Cranston from Power Rangers and Breaking Bad. Both would be really good, but I would I would prefer to see Brian Cranston in the role. That's my, that's my choice right there. So next, Bane, we're looking at Javier Bardem from Skyfall and Loving Pablo and Half Thor Bjornsson. Uh from Game of Thrones and Kickbox Retaliation. From the two of these, I would choose Javier Bardem and then just CGI the bad boy. All right, so next let's take a look at the teams. David Harbour, Marina Bakarin, Jessica Chastain, Adam Driver, Andy Serkis, Henry Cavill, Topher Grace, Ben Kingsley, Javier Bardem. And then for team two, we're looking at Josh Brolin, Evangeline Lilly, Bryce Dallas Howard, Michael C. Hall, Alfred Molina, Teddy Sears, James McAvoy, Brian Cranston, and Half Thor Bjornsson. So between the two of these, I am going to go with team one. I'm gonna do team one. So let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comments, which team is your favorite. All right, next for Devil of Fan Casts, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have, first up, Harvey Bullock, John Goodman, and David Harbour. Between the two of these, I like David Harbour. Next up, we have Catwoman, the great Rosario Dawson, who is no stranger to either Marvel or DC. And, she's all, and then we also have Amber Rose, 
Reva from The Punisher on Netflix and Son of God. Between the two of these for Catwoman, I am choosing Amber Rose Reva. She looks, she looks exactly like Catwoman. And then also Poison Ivy, we have Jessica Chastain from Molly's Game and Dark Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard from Jurassic World and Spider-Man 3. Between the two of these, I'm choosing Bryce Dallas Howard. We also have Scarecrow, Jackie Earl Healy, Haley, and Adam Driver. Now, you guys already know how I feel. If we're going with an older Scarecrow, I'm choosing Jackie Earl Healy. He's really good for the role. Also, for a younger version, Adam Driver, who's not really young, but, you know, a little bit younger, I would go Adam Driver. And I really like Adam Driver, but I'm going to go Jackie Earl Haley. Um, so, Penguin, we have Paul Giamatti, golden. And then also... Jonah Hill, also golden. I like both of these. Jonah Hill is younger. Paul Giamatti is a little older. I would go with Paul Giamatti. All right, next we have, for Harvey Dent, we have Two-Face, um, Matthew McConaughey, and Ben Barnes. Again, I think your team two is a younger version of, of your castings. Uh, I'm going to go with Matthew McConaughey, but yes, Ben Barnes would be awesome in the role. If you're going to go a little bit younger, Ben Barnes is a great choice for Two-Face. Um, Riddler, we've got David Tennant, Doctor Who, and Jessica Jones, and also Guy Pierce from Iron Man 3 and The Count of Monte Cristo. If you haven't seen that, you definitely should. But Guy Pierce, great actor. I would choose. I might actually still choose David Tennant, but Guy Pierce is really good for this one. Um, next, Jason Isaacs from The Patriot and the Oa for Mr. Freeze, and also Michael Fassbender for Mr. Freeze. I. I really love what they did with Magneto in the Fox franchise um, with him. And I really love what they did specifically with his family, with his daughter, giving empathy, you know, for him. He murders a crew full of people, but you actually want him to do it because you understand his plight. You understand his brokenness. And in that same way, I want him to bring exactly that. To Mr. Freeze. I want the audience to empathize and almost root for Mr. Freeze. That's what I want. So I'm choosing Michael Fassbender. All right, Bane. We have Javier Bardem and Dave Batista. Between the two of these, I'm choosing Dave Batista. All right, next up we've got Harvey Bullock is, I'm sorry, we've got John Goodman, Rosario Dawson, Jessica Chastain, Jackie Earl Haley, Paul Giamatti, Matthew McConaughey, David Tennant, Jason Isaacs, and Javier Bardem. After that, we have David Harbour, Amber Rose Riva, Bryce Dallas Howard, Adam Driver, Jonah Hill, Ben Barnes, Guy Pierce, Michael Fassbender, and Dave Batista. Between the two of these, I'm going to go with Team 2. Surprise, surprise. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you guys want Team 1 or Team 2 for this? Let's hear it. All right, next up, we've got Daft Detective. Welcome back, my friend, to the Fan Casting Summit. You guys follow this guy on Instagram. He's got some sick edits, but he's also got some sick fast fan casting. You guys should get on that. So here's some of these images and edits. So take a look. You guys can't tell. These are edits. He put the hats on and that's sick. That's awesome. Makes it feel like the characters. That's what I'm talking about, my man. So we got Michael, um, for Harvey Bullock, Michael Chiklis from The Shield and Gotham and also Forrest Whitaker from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story and Black Panther. I really like Forrest, but Michael Chiklis has my vote. Next up, Catwoman, we have Marina Bakarin and Kristen Ritter from Jessica Jones and Breaking Bad. I think that's a really clever, really cool edit, and I like that, but I'm gonna go with Marina Bakarin. Uh, next up for Poison Ivy, we have Laura Vandervoort, if that's how you say it and spell it, um, from Bitten and Smallville, and also Laura Prepon from Orange is the New Black and The Girl on the Train. Between the two of these, I'm going to go with Laura Vandervoort. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she played Supergirl on Smallville. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if that's not correct, but I believe that's who she is. For Scarecrow, we have David Anders from Heroes and Once Upon a Time and Mark Pellegrino from Supernatural and Lost. Oh, man, these are really, really cool. I be Between the two of these guys, I think I'm going to go with... Mark Pellegrino. I'm going with Mark. Penguin, we have Mark Shepard from Supernatural and Leverage. And then we also have Nick Frost from The World's End and Into the Badlands. I love these edits, man. These are really good. Um, I love what you do with the monocle there. That's really cool. But I'm going to go with Nick Frost for this one. I think it's more accurate. So then for Two-Face, we have Justin Hartley from Smallville and This Is Us. And also Sam Witwer from Smallville 
and Solo, a Star Wars story, he's also in Supergirl. Both these guys have been heavily involved with DC and DC Comics and DC movies and stuff for a very long time. I think both these guys would do amazing, amazing jobs, but there is there is no way I can pass up Sam Witwer as, as Two-Face. That is golden, and plus that edit is dope, dude. That is a really good edit. So I'm gonna go with Sam Witwer. That's really awesome. And then for Riddler, we have Johnny Lee Miller from Dexter and Elementary. And then we also have Tom Cavanaugh from The Flash, CW, and Scrubs. I like both these guys, and I love the edit you did for uh, Johnny Lee Miller, but I'm gonna go with Tom Cavanaugh. Um, so then next we have Mr. Freeze, Ralph Fiennes, Schindler's List, and Skyfall. That's really cool, I like that. And then also Michael C. Hall from Dexter and Game Night. Um, I think that deck, that is a really good one. I think Michael C. Hall for this role is cool, but I'm gonna go with Ralph Fiennes because I want I want Mr. Freeze to be a little bit older. You gotta feel that like almost like the first 10 minutes of Up. You gotta see their relationship really develop, and then it just gets cut away, and then there's no more you know Nora Freeze, and she's like she's frozen, and she's not dead dead, but she's as, almost as good as dead. And he's got like a really limited amount of time. He's got to rescue her. He's got to save her. He's gonna do anything he can. It's gotta be like that. Like we gotta be crying in the first 10 minutes for Mr. Freeze, and then he's gotta go off the rails. You know what I mean? So I think Ralph Fiennes is gonna pull that off. All right, next up, we got Bane, Javier Bardem, No Country for Old Men, Loving Pablo, and Edgar Ramirez from American Crime Story and The Bourne Ultimatum. Between the two of these guys, I'm gonna go with Javier Bardem for this one. Uh, I really like that guy, I think he'll do well. So let's take a look at the teams for Daft Detective. We got Michael Chiklis, Marina Bakarin, Laura Vandervert, Mark Pellegrino, Mark Shepard, Justin Hartley, Johnny Lee Miller, Ralph Fiennes, and Javier Bardem. For team two, we have Forrest Whitaker, Kristen Ritter, Lauren Prepon, David Anders, Nick Frost, Sam Witwer, Tom Cavanaugh, Michael C. Hall, and Edgar Ramirez. I think I'm gonna go with team one for this one. It's close, because there's a couple guys on the right that I really, really liked. But I'm gonna go with team one for this one. I think overall, uh, the team is very well-rounded. I like that. So good choices. I really like that. And it's a bummer too, because Sam Witwer's on the right. I freaking love Sam Witwer. All right, so anyway. Let's keep moving. Good job, my man. Next up, we've got User Fancaster 18. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. So let's take a look. We got Tobey Maguire for Harvey Bullock from Brothers and Spider-Man 2, and Paul Giamatti from Billions and Big Fat Liar. I really like both these guys. If I had to choose between the two, I think I'm going to go to Tobey Maguire for Harvey Bullock. That might surprise you, but I'm going to go with him. Uh, that'd be really cool to see. Now for Catwoman, Selena Kyle, we have Phoebe Tonkin from the originals and the Vampire Diaries and Marina Bakarin from Deadpool and Gotham. I'm gonna, again, I know I've chosen her like every time, I'm gonna go with Marina Bakarin. Um, so next up we have for Poison Ivy, Daniel Rose Russell from the originals and legacies. And also we have Elena Satine from Revenge and The Gifted. Between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with Elena Satine. I think she's a little bit older, a little bit more mature, and I think that she'll be able to grab the role a little bit better. So that's my opinion there. Next, we have Scarecrow, Ross Lynch, My Friend Dahmer, and uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and Michael C. Hall from for Dexter and Game Night. Now, your team one is much younger than your team two. Um, I can see that pattern already. But Michael C. Hall, um, Ross Lynch, I think, would probably do a good job, but I would probably want to wait another 15 years to give him the role, you know what I mean? For, for Michael C. Hall, I think he's already there, so I'm gonna give it to Michael C. Hall. Next, Penguin, we have Josh Gad from Frozen and Beauty and the Beast, and Alfred Molina from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Spider-Man 2. Now, Boss Logic did an art piece for Josh Gad that basically won the world over. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, Josh Gad could totally do it. And I agree. But Alfred Molina, though. Alfred Molina would be really good, and I think he would kill the role. He'd do so good. So I'm gonna go Alfred. For Two-Face, we're looking at Matthew Daddario, Shadow Hunters and Delivery Man, I think he would be amazing, amazing for the role as a younger Two-Face. Again, I don't really want a younger uh, DCEU rogues gallery, especially given that Batman is already in his mid to late 40s. So, I'm gonna go with John Hamm. Uh, next, Riddler, we've got Evan Peters and Guy Pierce, which is pretty cool. Um, I think, man, Evan Peters, would be really good. And I think honestly, Guy Pierce is really good for villain roles and could do this role. But 
Evan Peters, I think his his natural like acting ability, the way that he brings himself to roles, he has a certain like flavor, personality, you know what I mean? And I think he would he, he matches the Riddler very, very well. So I'm gonna go with Evan Peters. Alright, next up we've got Mr. Freeze. We've got two of my favorite people to play this role. James McAvoy uh, would be a really, really good young Mr. Freeze, no doubt. But I'm going to go Patrick Stewart because he's exactly where I want him to be. A little bit older than I want him to be, but he doesn't look much older than I want him to be. So that's the point. Next, Bane. We've got Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones and Narcos. Also, he's cast in uh, The Mandalorian, the Star Wars live action TV show that's going to be dropping on the Disney streaming service on November 12th. So that's going to be really cool. But also Matt Willig from Concussion and the Bench Warmers, gigantic guy. And I think I would give this one to Matt Willig because you basically wouldn't even need to CGI the guy. So that would be really cool. Uh, and I like Pedro Pascal, but I'm going to give it to Matt. And finally, let's take a look at the teams. We've got Tobey Maguire, Phoebe Tonkin, Daniel Rose, Russell, Ross Lynch, Josh Gad, Matthew Daddario, Evan Peters, James McAvoy, and Pedro Pascal. So now let's take team two. Paul Giamatti, Marina Bakarin, Elena Satin, Michael C. Hall, Alfred Molina, J uh, John Hamm, Guy Pierce, Patrick Stewart, and Matt Willig. Almost entirely across the board, I'm going to go with team two. Um, a couple options that I thought would have been better on team one. However, I really like team two. So let me know what you guys think down below. Which team do you like the best? Thank you for sending these in. Use there. Really appreciate it. And let's keep moving. Next up, we're looking at Dr. Fancast. Welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look. Harvey Bullock. We've got David Harbour from Stranger Things and Hellboy. And Dan Fogler from Balls of Fury and Fantastic Beasts the Crimes of Grindelwald. Between the two of these, I think I'm going to go with David Harbour. Also from Catwoman, we're looking at Angelina Jolie from Maleficent and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And Kristen Ritter from Jessica Jones and Breaking Bad. Between the two of these, I would give it to Kristen Ritter. And uh, for Poison Ivy, we're looking at Jessica Chastain from Molly's Game and Dark Phoenix and Ava Green from Casino Royale and 300 Rise of an Empire. Between the two of these, I would give it to Jessica Chastain. I would definitely give it to Jessica. Ava is a great choice though. So for me, that's almost a tie. All right, next, Scarecrow. This is where it gets good. So Robert Carlyle from Once Upon a Time crushed that role crushed the role of Rumpelstiltskin um, and Aragon, which was not a fan, it was not a good movie. It was not, it was not that good, but not the, it's not really his fault. Um, David Tennant, Jessica Jones and Who Doctor Who. David Tennant also really good. I think he would do a good job, but man, this one's clear cut for me. Robert Carlyle as Scarecrow is what's up. Um, and then for Penguin, we're looking at Paul Giamatti from Billions and Big Fat Liar and James Spader from Avengers Age of Ultron and The Blacklist. For Penguin, I think either of these guys could do it, but I'm going to go with Paul Giamatti. Next up, we're looking at James McAvoy, Dark Phoenix, Glass, and James, uh, I'm sorry, Jake Gyllenhaal from Nightcrawler and Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, James McAvoy, we know he can play split personalities incredibly well incredibly well better than maybe anybody but jake dylan hall can also play someone with some serious issues i would like to see jake dylan hall get this role that's my take all right so for riddler we're looking at alan tudyk from doom patrol and star wars uh rogue one a star wars story and evan peters from dark phoenix and american horror story and uh i think evan peters has the total personality to play the riddler especially after seeing him play quicksilver but um, I'm going to go with Alan Tudyk. I think Alan Tudyk could totally nail this role. He's doing such a good job on Doom Patrol. Really like the guy. So I'm going to go with him. And for Mr. Freeze, we're looking at Mads Mikkelsen and Benedict Cumberbatch. Between the two of these guys, I think I'm going to go with Benedict Cumberbatch. Because he can play cold and he can also play connected. And I know Mads can too. But I really want to see Benedict Cumberbatch play that role. It would be really cool. So I'm going to give it to Benedict. If he doesn't get a chance to play like friggin' Brainiac, I would love to see him play Mr. Freeze. So uh, for Bane, we're looking at Vincent D'Onfrio from Daredevil and Jurassic World and Josh Brolin from Avengers Endgame and Deadpool 2. Between the two of these, I would probably go with maybe Josh Brolin to voice. 
But Vincent D'Onofrio in real life. I think that if Vincent D'Onofrio was to hit the gym, he would be able to get friggin' jacked. Like if you gave him like a year and a half or like just a year even, he would be able to transform into some monster. Like even, probably even six months. I mean, it didn't take Chris Pratt that long and he was fat, like he was really fat. So I'm gonna go with Vincent D'Onofrio. And finally, let's take a look at the teams. We got David Harbour, Angelina Jolie, Jessica Chastain, Robert Carlyle, Paul Giamatti, James McAvoy, Alan Tudyk, Mads Mikkelsen, and Vincent D'Onofrio. Then following that, we have Dan Fogler, Kristen Ritter, Eva Green, Dan, uh, David Tennant, James Spader, Jake Gyllenhaal, Evan Peters, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Josh Brolin. Between the two of these teams, I'm going to go with Team 1. I'm going with Team 1. I really like this team. I think everyone on the list would do really, really well. Um, and on Team 2, there's a couple people that I thought were like, maybe, maybe, maybe not. A little bit, maybe a little bit mismatched, perhaps. But nevertheless, I really, really like these. Good job. Let's keep going. All right. Ultimate Fan Cast. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. So, for Ultimate Fan Cast, uh, Jason Alexander, we have for Harvey Bullock from Seinfeld and ER, and also we have Josh Brolin from Deadpool 2 and Avengers Endgame. Between the two of these, I would go with Jason Alexander uh, from Seinfeld. Um, I think that he would be able to pull off that kind of like cuts corners, donut eating, rough around the edges police officer that we all want for Harvey Bullock. Um, Josh Brolin is really good too, but I think that Jason Alexander probably already has that in his mind, just ready to play uh, like a card he's ready to just drop on the table. So that would be really cool. And um, Catwoman, Miranda Bakarin, or Ruby Rose. I'm going to go with, for this one, I'll go with Ruby Rose. I think that this one, I think she's good for the role. I know she's already playing Batwoman, but I'm going to just, I'm going to go out and just say, I think she would also be good for the role. And Poison Ivy, Jessica Chastain, and Karen Gillan. I think that Karen Gillan is great maybe a little bit too young for the role. I'm gonna go with Jessica Chastain. And Scarecrow, Adam Driver, and Dane DeHaan. I'm, I think Dane DeHaan's a little young. I'm gonna go with Adam Driver. Penguin, Josh Gad, great for the role. And Elijah Wood, probably really great for the role. I think that he could play um, the role really well. I would really like to see Elijah Wood try, um, but I think Josh Gad's already got what it's gonna take. So I think I'm gonna go with Josh Gad. And Keanu Reeves for Two-Face and Army Hammer for Two-Face. Man, it would be really cool to see either of these guys play Two-Face, but I'm gonna go with Army Hammer to play this role because it would be really cool to see whoever plays Two-Face be a freaking like big, big intimidating guy. And Army Hammer's 6'5", so I'm gonna go with him. All right, next up we've got Riddler, David Tennant, Jessica Jones and Doctor Who, and Eddie Redmayne from Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, and Les Miserables. Between the two of those, I'm gonna go with um, David Tennant. And for Mr. Freeze, we're looking at Christopher Eccleston, the guy with one of the strangest sets of ears in the world, and also <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch uh, from Sherlock and Doctor Strange. But given the choice between the two of these, I would probably go with Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I like Christopher Eccleston, but not as much as I like Benedict Cumberbatch. So that's where I'm going with that. Next, let's take a look at Bane. We have Matt Willig from Concussion and the Ventwarmers and Andre Trico Tricoto. I don't know how to say that. Tri Tricoto, if that's what it is. He's from Warcraft and Ice Soldier's big, big guy. Could, could very easily play the role, but I think Matt Willig maybe looks a little bit more like the role and would be a little bit more believable as a Hispanic individual, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go with Matt Willie. And let's take a look at the team. So we're looking at first Jason Alexander, Marina McCarran, Jessica Chastain, Adam Driver, Josh Gad, Keanu Reeves, David Tennant, Christopher Eccleston, Matthew Willig, Josh Brolin, Ruby Rose, Karen Gillan, Dane DeHaan, Elijah Wood, Army Hammer, Eddie Redmayne, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Andre Trickatoo. I think for the for this roster, I'm gonna have to go with Team One, uh, almost across the board. I like Team One, so that's my choice. You guys, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Let's talk about it. All right, next up, we've got Fan Casting Ten. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. We have first David Harbour uh, and Michael Chiklis for these for the role of Harvey Bullock. I love both of these guys for the role. I think I'm gonna give it to Michael Chiklis. After that, we've got Catwoman. Marie 
Avgaropoulos and Ruby Rose. I really like Marie Avgaropoulos. I think she should be Catwoman. Um, definitely. I think she's perfect for the role. She looks like the role. She'll pull off the role. Yes, please. Marie Avgaropoulos. Poison Ivy. We're looking at Holland Roden and Natalie Dormer. Holland Roden is a great choice, but I'm going to go with Natalie Dormer. Scarecrow. Adam Driver versus Sam Riley from Maleficent and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, I haven't really seen... I mean, I saw Maleficent. I just don't remember this guy. Um, I don't remember Sam Riley. So I'm going to go with Adam Driver because he's my favorite pick for this role. Um, Penguin. We have Josh Gad and Jonah Hill. Between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Jonah Hill. Uh, Two-Face. We've got John Hamm and Army Hammer. I'm going to do... Wow, this one's tough because... I love both these guys for the role. John Hamm would be awesome. Mm, Army Hammer's a fantastic actor. I'm going to go with John Hamm. I'm going to stick with John Hamm on that one. For Riddler, we've got Neil Patrick Harris and Misha Collins from Carla and Supernatural. This is one, this one's really tough, but I'm going to... I, I mean, I like Misha, but Neil has got it for me. I love Neil. Neil's going to be... Neil's got to be the Riddler, dude. He has to be the Riddler. Mr. Freeze. Ooh, this is cool. We've got Robert Carlyle again, but instead of being Scarecrow, we've got him as Mr. Freeze. And Stanley Tucci, Captain America, the first of the first Avenger, and the Devil Wears Prada. Between the two of these, I'm going with Stanley Tucci. He's, he's my number one pick for this role. So I'm going with him. And for Bane, we have Dominic Purcell from The Flash, CW, and Prison Break, and Manu Bennett from Arrow, CW, and The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. Between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Dominic Purcell. And finally, let's take a look at the roster. David Harbour, Marie Agropolis, Holland Roden, Adam Driver, Josh Gad, John Hamm, Neil Patrick Harris, Robert Carlyle, and Dominic Purcell. For team two, we have Michael Chiklis, Ruby Rose, Natalie Dormer, Sam Riley, Jonah Hill, Army Hammer, Misha Collins, Stanley Tucci, and Manu Bennett. So between the two of these two teams, I'm gonna go with team one. I'm gonna go with team one because there's only two people on this list that I don't really like feel was a match. And for me, it was Sam Riley and Misha Collins. It's good, but it's not, for me, it just didn't, it didn't sell. So I'm going with team one. Yep, team one. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, Fan Casting Central, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. Harvey Bullock, we got Dean Norris and Brian Baumgartner from The Office and License to Wed. That's really cool. Um, between the two of these guys, I think I want to lean Dean Norris, but I'm gonna for the for the wild card, I'm gonna go with Brian Baumgartner. Um, because I've only seen him in the office. I would like to see him play something that isn't silly. So that would be nice. All right, so for Catwoman, we got Jamie Alexander from Thor The Dark World and Blind Spot, and we also have Janet Montgomery from Salem and New Amsterdam. Between the two of these, it's an easy decision for me. I'm gonna go with Jamie Alexander, but you guys let me know what you think down below. All right, for Poison Ivy, we've got Bridget Regan and Alexandra Breckenridge from The Walking Dead and This Is Us. For, uh, for me, I think Alexandra Breckenridge is the clear choice, but you guys let me know if you feel differently. Maybe uh, Agent Carter and White Collar sold you on Bridget Reagan. Let me know. All right, for Scarecrow, Charlto Copley, if that's how you say it. If maybe I type, I don't know if I typoed that, but um, District 9 and Chappie, and also Dan Stevens from Legion and Downton Abbey. I really love Dan Stevens, but for the role of Scarecrow, I'm going to go with Charlto Copley because him being a little bit older will be able to sell him as a doctor a little bit easier so i'm gonna go with him um penguin we have nick frost from hot fuzz and Shaun of the dead and eddie marsan from hancock and sherlock holmes i think that eddie marsan is a really cool choice i like that but nick frost is perfect i'm gonna go with him all right Two-Face, we've got John Hamm from Tag and Baby Driver, and Ben Barnes from The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, and The Punisher on Netflix. This is cool. I love both of these for Harvey Dent, but I'm going to go with the older option, because that's where I, I feel he should be. Maybe you guys disagree. Let me know in the comments, but I'm going with John Hamm. Next up, for Riddler, we have Martin Wallstrom from Mr. Robot and Ashes in the Snow, and Matthew Gray Goobler from Alvin and the Chipmunks and Criminal Minds. I... 
between the two of these, I'm going with Matthew Gray Goobler. To me, it seems clear, but I'm going to go there. Tell me if you disagree. All right, so next up we have, for Mr. Freeze, Ralph Fiennes from Schindler's List and the Grand Budapest Hotel, and Col this should say Colm Fiore from Thor and the Umbrella Academy. That's who this should be. So, sorry about the typo, this should say Colm Fiore, but I'm still, I'm gonna go with Ralph Fiennes. So Bane, we have John Huertes from Castle This Is Us and Rodrigo Santoro from 300 and Westworld. Uh, between the two of these, I think I'm gonna go with John Huertes from Castle. All right, so we have Dean Norris, Jamie Alexander, Bridget Regan, Charlto Copley, Nick Frost, John Hamm, Martin Wallstrom, Ralph Fiennes, and John Huertas. From team two, we have Brian Baumgartner, Janet Montgomery, Alexander Breckenridge, Dan Stevens, Eddie Marsan, Ben Barnes, Matthew Gray Goobler, Colm Fiore, and Rodrigo Santoro. Between the two of these teams, I think I am going to go with team one. I'm gonna surprise you guys and go with team one. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Let's keep moving. All right, the FanCast dude, welcome to the FanCasting Summit. All right, so let's take a look. Harvey Bullock, we have for Vince Vaughn and Jeremy Ratchford from Cold Case and Leatherheads. Between the two of these, I'm going Vince Vaughn. And for Catwoman, we have Marina Bakarin from Deadpool and Gotham and Isaac Gonzalez from Alita Battle Angel and Baby Driver. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go, I would, I will, I've been going with Marina Bakarin for a really long time. I think Isa Gonzalez is really good for the role. If she got the role, I'd be happy. If Marina Bakarin got the role, I'd be happy. So I, for this one, I'm gonna go Isa Bakar. Uh, I mean, sorry, Isa Gonzalez. Just to just to change it up a little bit, I want to give her some love too. So next up, Poison Ivy, Ava Green, uh, and Alexander Alexandra Breckenridge from The Walking Dead. And this is us. I think Alexander Breckenridge is spot on for this role. So I'm gonna go with Alexander Breckenridge. All right, Scarecrow, we have Adam Driver and Adrian Brody. Now, I really like these choices because these are also my choices. So I'm going to go with Adam Driver because I think he's the best for the role and Adrian Brody because he's a friggin' creep and he would play the role awesome. So that's my choice. For Penguin, we have Alfred Molina from Spider-Man 2 and Raiders of the Lost Ark and Andy Serkis from The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers and Black Panther. Between the two of these, I think I wanna go with Alfred Molina, but it's really, really close. I think that Andy Serkis would do amazing. Absolutely amazing. So that's my choice. Next, we have Two-Face, Oscar Isaac from Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and X-Men Apocalypse. And we also have John Hamm from Mad Men and Baby Driver. These guys are two of my top, like three favorite actors for the role, um, which is, it makes it really tough, but I'm gonna go with John Hamm. All right, for Riddler, we have Matthew Gray Goobler from Criminal Minds and How to Be a Serial Killer, and James McAvoy from Glass and Dark Phoenix. Either of these guys would knock it out of the park. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh, you know what? For this one, I'm gonna go with Matthew Gray Goobler because I think less people know him, and it would mean that people would have, I think, maybe less expectation for him too which probably sets your movie up to succeed a little bit more. You know what I mean? All right, so that's my choice. Uh, next, for Mr. Freeze, Stanley Tucci from Captain America, The First Avenger, and uh, The Devil Wears Prada, and Mark Strong from Green Lantern and Shazam. Now again, Mark Strong is in the DCEU, so I'm going with Stanley Tucci, but again, Stanley Tucci, other than Mark Strong, is my favorite actor for the role. So, no loss there. And uh, with Bane, Javier Bardem, No Country for Old Men, Loving Pablo, and then Half Thor Julius Bjornsson for Game of Thrones and Kickbox Retaliation. Between the two of these guys, I'm gonna go with Javier Bardem. And let's take a look at the roster. So we've got Vince Vaughn, Marina Bakarin, Ava Green, Adam Driver, Alfred Molina, Oscar Isaac, Matthew Gray Goobler, Stanley Tucci, Javier Bardem, Jeremy Ratchford, Isaac Gonzalez, Alexander Breckenridge, Adrian Brody, Andy Serkis, John Hamm, James McAvoy, Mark Strong, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Between the two of these teams, I'm gonna go with team one for this one. And it's very, very close. Honestly, either team for me is a total win. I really like all of these. Either way works for me, but team one is my choice. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Which one is your team? Let's talk about it. Next up, Nerdy Blurb TV. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. This guy is not only on Instagram, but he is also a YouTube channel with the best 
editing on YouTube. You should check him out. Fantastic. Love this guy. So let's take a look at his choices. So first up, we got Michael Madsen from Reservoir Dogs and the Hateful Eight for Harvey Bullock and Woody Harrelson from The Hunger Games and Venom. Now, I really like both of these, but I would probably go with Woody Harrelson for that cop that's just really edgy. You know what I mean? He, he feels like an edgy guy. So I'm going to go with edgy Woody Harrelson for edgy Harvey Bullock. Next up, Catwoman. We've got Miranda Bakarin and Jamie Alexander for this. I love Jamie Alexander, and I think she is the person I would choose out of the two of these ladies to play Catwoman. Um, Poison Ivy, we've got Jessica Chastain and Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, between the two of these, I am going to go with Bryce Dallas Howard for Poison Ivy. All right, for Scarecrow, we've got Mads Mikkelsen from Doctor Strange and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Adam Driver for, for Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and Black Klansman. I'm going to go with... Really tough, because I love, I love, love, love Mads Mikkelsen, but I'm gonna go with Adam Driver. He, I think, deserves this role. He looks like and feels like the Scarecrow from the Arkham Knight games. You know what I mean? Like, he just feels like he's gonna have those, like, syringe needles on the glove, and he's about to, like, shoot you up with all kinds of sickness. You know what I mean? So, that's, that's the guy that I think I want to play him. And then Penguin. We've got Alfred Molina, Spider-Man 2 Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then Josh Gad, for Frozen and Beauty and the Beast. I am gonna go with Alfred Molina for this one, but Josh Gad is also a total win for this role. And for Two Face, again, we got Adrian Pastar from Agents of Shield and Supergirl, and Gabriel Macht from Suits and the Spirit. Between the two of these, I am going with Adrian Pastar from Agents of Shield. I think he would be awesome, awesome in the role of Two Face. Great call. And Riddler, we've got Alan Tudyk from Doom Patrol, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Eddie Redmayne from Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, and Les Miserables. I think he's good in the role, for sure. Uh, Eddie Redmayne is good, and I feel bad because I haven't chosen him at all this entire time. But I'm still going to choose Alan Tudyk in this role for Riddler. I really like him, and I think he would crush it. So that's my choice. All right, and then for Mr. Freeze, we've got Christopher Heyerdahl from Van Helsing and Hell on Wheels. Really interesting choice there. And Michael C. Hall from Chuck and Gamer. I haven't really seen Michael C. Hall play very many good guys, and I haven't really seen Christopher Heyerdahl play a lot of good guys. But I will choose Christopher Heyerdahl because he looks almost like the animated series version. You know, like Batman the Animated Series? He looks like he was ripped right out of that, and someone stole his goggles and you know gave him his natural skin color back that's what it feels like he feels like that he's got that head shape that look so i'm gonna go with this guy and let's see how he can do so i'm gonna go with christopher Heyerdahl. And then for bane we've got javier bardem no country for old men and loving pablo and dave batista from guardians of the galaxy and hotel artemis again between the two of them i'm going dave batista now let's take a look at the teams so we got michael madsen marina bakarin jessica chastain mads mickelson alfred molina adrian pizdar Alan Tudai, Christopher Heyerdahl, and Javier Bardem. And then for the second team, we've got Woody Harrelson, Jamie Alexander, Bryce Dallas Howard, Adam Driver, Josh Gad, uh, Gabriel Mock, Eddie Redmayne, Michael C. Hall, and Dave Batista. It's like winners all around. I really like these, but I'm going to go be, just because the majority is like at least a seven or up in my mind from a rate of, of one to ten. I'm going to go with team one, even though. You know, Woody Harrelson, Jamie Alexander, Bryce Dallas Howard, Adam Driver, Josh Gad, and Dave Batista are like level 10s for me. I think that I'm going to have to go with number one because across the board, I've got like no problems. So it's smooth sailing for me on team one. All right, Fancaster23, welcome to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look. We got Harvey Bullock, John Goodman, and Holt McCollany from Alien 3 and Fight Club. This is a really cool choice because I haven't seen him in a lot since then. But I'm going to go with John Goodman for this one. Catwoman, we've got Rebecca Ferguson and Megan Fox. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go, for this one, for Catwoman, I'm going to go with Megan Fox. That might surprise you guys, but she's also really, really small. And she's got a really, like, you know, thin frame. She's shapely, too. I think she would work really well in the role of Catwoman. So I'm going to go with Megan Fox. And uh, Poison Ivy, Isla Fisher from Hot Rod, Now You See Me, and Bryce Dallas Howard. I like both of these ladies for the role, but I'm going to go with... Isla Fisher. I'm going to surprise you guys there. 
Scarecrow, Zachary Quinto, and Robert Pattinson. You guys know Zachary Quinto from Heroes and Star Trek and Robert Pattinson from Good Time and the Rover. Um, geez, man. Both of these are killer, killer for this role. I think I'm going to go with Robert Pattinson. Even though he's in talks right now, um, as of the making of this video, I'm going to go with Robert Pattinson. He's in talks to play Batman for the non-DCEU Batman movie that's coming out, The Batman. I'm going to go with Robert Pattinson. All right. And then uh, Toby Jones, Captain America, the first Avenger, the Hunger Games, and Jack Black, the House of the Clock and its Walls, and Tropic Thunder. Um, for this one, for Penguin, I'm going to go with... It would be really cool to see Toby Jones in that role. It really would. I want to see Jack Black do a serious role, though. So I'm going to go with Jack Black and see how that goes. All right. And next, Two-Face, Matt Bomer from White Collar and American Horror Story. He's also in Doom Patrol. And then Matthew Good, A Discovery of Witches and Watchmen. Between the two of these, I'm going to go with Matt Bomer. I think he's a lot more masculine, a lot more intimidating physically. Um, I think he's just, he looks more like Harvey Dent to me. So I'm going to go with Matt Bomer. All right, Riddler, Eddie Redmayne, Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, and Lamez Robles, and Joe Mazzello from Jurassic Park and Bohemian Rhapsody. Between the two of these, I'm going with Eddie Redmayne. That's my first vote for Eddie Redmayne, um, uh, which is, you know, I like Eddie Redmayne. It might not seem that way, but I do. And um, yeah, I think he's he's the better choice here. And then for uh, Mr. Freeze, we've got Patrick Stewart from Logan and X-Men. And also, Christoph Waltz from Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained. I am going to go with Patrick Stewart, but I do think Christoph Waltz is a great choice. For Bane, we have Half Thor Julius Bjornsson from Game of Thrones and Kickboxer Retaliation. And also, Conan Stevens from Game of Thrones and Bangkok Adrenaline. Between the two of these guys, I'm going to go with Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. That's where I'm going with this one. So we have John Goodman, Rebecca Ferguson, Isla Fisher, Zachary Quinto, Toby Jones, Matt Bomer, Eddie Redmayne, Patrick Stewart, and Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. Then for team two, we've got Holt McCollany, Megan Fox, Bryce Dallas Howard, Robert Pattinson, Jack Black, Matthew Good, Joe Mazzello, Christoph Waltz, and Conan Stevens. Between the two of these, I think I'm going to go with team one because across the board, I like everybody that's on that list. I don't. There's a couple of people on team two that kind of had me on the fence or just like, I don't know about that. So I'm going to go with team one because literally everyone across the board I would be happy with. So um, for me, it's team one. Let me know what you guys think down below. Great choices. Let's keep moving. Next up, we have me. We have <laughs> the Stuff of Legend show. And I am going to show you guys my choices. I also did a little bit of art for you guys as well. I did some edits so that you guys can see those. It's part of my casting, so you're not going to have to change a bunch of images. But let's just go through this really quickly, all right? So... Harvey Bullock, we have Vince Vaughn from Delivery Man and Brawl and Cell Block 99, and also Michael Chiklis from The Shield and Gotham. Um, between the two of these guys, Vince Vaughn is my top choice, um, and Michael Chiklis is my very close second. I really like both these guys. I want you guys to tell me who you want. Obviously, you guys know these are my picks. I don't have to defend them. I want you to hear what you guys have to say. So leave comments and let me know what you guys think about that. And also, let me know what you guys think about these edits. They were kind of quick work, but you know, it's encouraging if you guys tell me what you like and what you didn't like, what I can improve upon, that kind of stuff. So let's keep moving. Catwoman, we have Jamie Alexander from Thor of the Dark World and Blind Spot, and Kristen Crook from Beauty and the Beast on CW, and Smallville. You guys remember her probably mostly from Smallville. Um, where she played Lana Lang with a G, Lang. I think that both of these ladies would be really great for the role. Jamie Alexander is my favorite with a close second to Kristen Crook. Let me know what you guys think. Also, Poison Ivy, we have Sophie Turner from Dark Phoenix and Game of Thrones, and also Evan Rachel Wood from True Blood and Westworld. I personally like Sophie Turner for this. I think she would do really well, but so would Evan Rachel Wood. So let me know which one's your favorite down below. And for Scarecrow, we have Adam Driver from Star Wars The Force Awakens and Black Klansman, and Adrian Brody from King Kong and The Pianist. Um, I put the images in the middle because I had to distort the images and faces a little bit just to change it and make it fit the um, image I was going for for Scarecrow, the type of Scarecrow that I want, which is the one from the Arkham games. But um, let me know what you guys think down below, which one is your favorite. I really like Adam Driver, but Adrian Brody is a really, really close second, so let me know. And next we have... Penguin, I really liked the idea of John Lovitz, who already has a hook nose. It would feel very much like a lot of the old classic TV shows for um, not animated, but live action like Adam West 
for uh, Penguin. So I really like John Lovitz. He could give us a really modern spin on an older classic version. Um, from the Three Amigos, the Bench Warmers, you've seen him in a bunch of funny stuff, but I would like to give him a chance to do a serious role. And then Jonah Hill, same thing. He's been in a couple serious roles now. Maniac, War Dogs, a little bit funny, a little bit serious. And I think he'd be great for the role as well. A little bit younger. So you guys tell me what you like down below. And then also for Two-Face, we have Jul uh, Julian McMahon. If you can't recognize him because I did the edit, um, I, I, I thought it was close enough you guys to be able to tell his face. He played Dr. Doom in Fantastic Four, the, the old one in the early 2000s, and he's in Marvel's Runaways right now. And uh, he's playing one of the main uh, antagonists. And then also, John Hamm from Mad Men and Baby Driver, you guys know John Hamm already, um, on the right. You guys can maybe see the distinction a little bit in the faces. Um, I tried to make it as you know close to them as possible with while still adding you know the, the lines and, and whatnot So you guys let me know which of these two you like the most I think Julian McMahon from Fantastic Four He used to play Dr. Doom would be really really good in the role. So let me know And we have for Riddler Neil Patrick Harris from How I Met Your Mother in a series of unfortunate events and Matthew Lillard from Scooby-Doo and Good Girls now. I know the masks look a little wonky here um, I didn't do a great job. It was pretty quick work on these ones, but um, let me know what you guys think about these down below uh, We've already seen plenty of images for these guys. So either Neil Patrick Harris or, or Shaggy from Scooby-Doo So let me know and uh, with mr. Freeze we have this one took me a little while Stanley Tucci from the Hunger Games and the Devil Wears Prada and Ed Harris from Run All Night and Apollo 13. I am a little proud of these edits, but let me know if there's any constructive criticism because I'm not very, very good. I'm just good like enough to get these done. Um, but I really liked how these came out. So with Mr. Freeze, Stanley Tucci I think is the guy. So let me know what you guys think down below. And with Bane, we have Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy Hotel Artemis and a little known actor, he's up and coming, but you might have seen him in the YouTube series Weird City and Sunset Glory, uh, Doolittle's Heroes. He's got a couple credits that are like coming up. He's been in a few short films or um, you know, like indie films, things like that, um, small TV shows. He's also in SWAT right now. So if you're watching that TV show, he's in there as well. He plays a lot of Marines because he's a big guy big beefy guy Hispanic guy too so Dave Batista is my number one pick with a short second as Dave David Marietta jr. Um, you probably have seen him in weird city that's probably where you saw him so um, let me know which one you guys think down below and let's take a look at the roster so first we have Vince Vaughn Jamie Alexander Sophie Turner Adam driver John Lovitz Julian McMahon Neil Patrick Harris, Stanley Tucci, and Dave Batista. And second, we have Michael Chiklis, Kristen Crook, Evan Rachel Wood, Adrian Brody, Jonah Hill, John Hamm, Matthew Lillard, Ed Harris, and David Marietta Jr. So these are my choices for team one and team two. Obviously, you guys know my team one is my favorite with team two being a close second. Let me know which one you guys like the most down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And finally, that brings us to our final results. So we are now here. We have seen all of the choices from every fan caster. All 30 of us have come together to show who our favorite actors are for these roles for the DCEU um, Batman rogues. But now we have tallied up the final votes and counted them so that we can show you who the most wanted actors are for the roles of the DCEU Batman Rogues Gallery. So here are the most wanted actors to play the DCEU Batman Rogues. The first winner is number one most wanted, Vince Vaughn with eight votes. He is the most wanted actor to play Harvey Bullock, the GCPD detective in the DCEU. This is really big, I really like this. With a close second coming in for David Harbour, in second place with seven votes, one vote behind him. That was a really close run, guys. That was almost a tie. And then tied for third place is Nathan Fillion with five votes and John Goodman with five votes. I'm really happy with those results. I really like all these actors for the role. I think uh, Vince Vaughn deserves the win and I would love to see him play the role. So let's take a look at the next one. Most wanted actress to play DCU Selena Kyle Catwoman is Marina Bakarin with 11 votes. Dude, I'm really happy with that. I, I really liked her all the way through. Um, most people wanted her in there. They were either the first or second choice. Most people had her as the first. 
and then close seconds come to Isaac Gonzalez with seven votes, just a few votes behind, and third place to Ruby Rose with five votes. That's really good. I really like all three of these actresses for the role. I'm really happy that Marina Bacaro won. I think that she deserves that, and I would love to see her in the role. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. And for most wanted actress to play DCU, Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, we have Jessica Chastain is the number one most wanted actress with eight votes, followed by a tie for second, a three-way tie with Natalie Dormer, Isla Fisher, and Bryce Dallas Howard all getting five votes each with a, another triple tie for third place with Alexander Breckenridge, Karen Gillan, and Evan Rachel Wood all receiving three votes each. That's really cool. That's a lot of... That's a lot of tying up right there. That's a lot of these votes. If you, I mean, if you count that up, that's most of the votes. So, all right, so let's keep moving. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments about this victory. I think Jessica Chastain deserves the role. Most wanted actor to play DCU, Jonathan Crane. Also Scarecrow is Adam Driver with a whopping 11 votes. That's really big. That's a big win. And we're also looking at second place with Jackie Earl Haley getting five votes and a tie, a two-way tie, for third place with Remy Malik with four votes and Adrian Brody with four votes. I think all of these guys uh, deserve to win, even though I didn't personally vote for Remy Malik a lot. I know a lot of you guys did. His name came up almost a, a lot of times, well, four times at least, but he came up four times in that role, among other roles. And I'm really glad that Adam Driver won. I really like him. And I know you guys do too. That's what this means. He got the most votes. And I really appreciate that. Let me know what you guys think down below. Was one of these guys the one that you wanted to win the most? Let's talk about it. All right, next up. Most wanted actor to play DCU Oswald Cobblepot Penguin is Andy Serkis with nine votes. That's, that's a good win right there. Followed closely by Jonah Hill in second place with eight votes. One vote behind and Nick Frost, uh, two votes behind that in third place with six votes. Really great. Um, clearly, you can tell that boss logic really influences the way that our culture thinks. A lot of us didn't see Andy Serkis for Penguin until after boss logic did that art, and then that stole our hearts. We remembered what we saw in Black Panther, we remember what we saw in Age of Ultron, and then we said, you know what? Dang it, he can totally play that role. That would be really cool to see. We want that. And now he comes out on top as the most wanted actor to play the role. And I'm really grateful that Jonah Hill got some love too. I didn't expect as much love for Jonah Hill as he got. So that's really cool. Um, and let me know if you guys are happy with these results down below. Most wanted actor to play DCU Harvey Dent Two-Face is John Hamm with nine votes. And we have... Matthew McConaughey and Oscar Isaac tied for second place with three votes. So it looks like John Hamm pulled ahead by quite a bit. The next runner-ups only had three votes. So three votes for Matthew McConaughey, three votes for Oscar Isaac, and then tied for third place. I think that's what, seven? That's seven people tied for third with Jake Gyllenhaal, Sam Witwer, Gabriel Mock, Adrian Pistar, Ben Barnes, Army Hammer, and Michael C. Hall all receiving two votes. That's pretty good. That means that there's a good amount of diversity and that a lot of people are, are okay in the general populace's mind to play the role. Now, most people want John Hamm, which is why he won, but the fact that the ties for second and third place are so low on the totem pole means that there's a lot of diversity in the casting and a lot of people have that opportunity that maybe they might be able to play that role. So that's pretty cool. I like to see that sometimes. So that's nice. Next up, most wanted actor to play DCEU Edward Nigma Riddler is Neil Patrick Harris with six votes. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I thought I thought he was gonna get a lot more votes than six. But what's really cool is seeing the two votes that came after that. Was Eddie Redmayne, the guy that I only have voted for one time. Um, and five, I didn't, I didn't cast my vote for that. I just agreed with you guys five times that I liked him the most. But Eddie Redmayne got five votes in second place and Matthew Gray Goobler got three votes and came in third. And again, this is a role that there was a lot of diversity in the casting. A lot of people want a lot of different actors to play this role. Um, especially like you look at number three, there's, it's not even a tie for third with three votes. Three votes is not a lot of votes. Um, it's one tenth of the total. Actually, it's 1 20th of the total because everyone gets two votes and there's 30, 
30 casters from doing my math correctly i'm an idiot so anyway but with this i'm really happy i really like all three of these guys if any of these guys got the role i'd be really really happy so really good and i'm glad neil patrick harris got the win now most wanted actor to play dcu victor freeze mr freeze is patrick stewart with five votes five is again a very low number five is not a lot and we have Tied for second is Ed Harris with four votes and Mark Strong with four votes and Stanley Tucci with four votes. With third place, we have Ralph Fiennes. And that's also a really good thing. I'm really happy. Again, my votes were Ed Harris and Stanley Tucci. Mark Strong was my favorite to play the role. And Mark and Patrick Stewart was my next favorite for the role. So I really, really, really like this entire thing. I like all the ties, the runner-ups. Ralph Fiennes is great. And obviously you guys did too because these are the winners and that means you guys are winners. So that's cool. I hope that Patrick Stewart gets an opportunity to play another role. He's aging very gracefully, but we want to see him play as many roles as we possibly can because he's one of, the, one of the greatest actors of our time. So that'd be awesome. And Javier Bardem won most wanted actor to play Eduardo Durant's Bane with 13 votes. That is a big win. That right there is over one third of every person voting for this guy. And that's wild success. Now we're looking at Dave Batista coming in in second with 10 votes. Again, that's a good second place run. 10 votes is exactly one third of all fan casters in this summit. So again, most people are saying Javier Bardem and Dave Batista, and seven people said Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. So that's that's really close. That's a really close tie. I really like all three of these guys for the role. Um, I specifically really like Dave Batista, but Javier Bardem is also great, and I think Half Thor Julius Bjornsson will do great as well. Now, if they're not going to go fully CGI, we might actually get to see two out of three of these guys play the role, because one of them might play the body, and one of them might play the voice which I think is totally great. I think that would work just fine. So that was it. That was the whole fan casting summit. But right now we're gonna look at the final results. This is the whole team. I wanted to show you guys the roster so you guys can see the full team of the most wanted actors to play the Batman rogues in the DCEU. This is Vince Vaughn, Marina Bakarin, Jessica Chastain, Adam Driver, Andy Serkis, John Hamm, Neil Patrick Harris, Sir Patrick Stewart, and Javier Bardem. This, guys, is the most wanted actors to play the Batman rogues in the DCEU. Congratulations, you guys. We got through it. This is a big, big video. I'm really happy with it. I'm really excited with the results and the castings. It was so much fun. But you know what? Before the day is done, I wanted to say thank you for tuning into the Fan Casting Summit number five, DCEU Batman rogues. And again, I wanted to shout out and say thank you to everyone who participated by sending in your fan castings to me through the email at thestuffoflegendshow at gmail.com. I appreciate you guys collaborating with me from Instagram and even you guys from YouTube. If you want to be part of this, you just hit me up. But first, before we do that, I wanted to let you guys know and thank you guys for being part of the Fan Casting Summit. So let's go ahead and read off and thank everybody. First up, Wave 88 World of Fancasts, Correct Rankings Fancast, Agent Fancast, Dream Fancast, Reimagine Fancast, Nerds United, Shadow Fancast, Just Another Fancast Account, Jax Fancast, Mr. Funcaster, Fancast Power, Connor's Fancast, Fancast Forever, Fancast Infinity, Fancast 24 7, Fancast Frenzy, Epic Fancast, Fancasting is Dope, Devil of Fancast, Daft Detective, User Fancaster 18, Dr. Fancast, Ultimate Fancast, Fancasting 10, Fancasting Central, The Fancast Dude, Nerdy Blurb TV, Fancaster 23. Thank you guys so much for being part of Fancasting Summit number five. I really appreciate you guys coming out for this. I love your guys' work. I follow you guys on Instagram. Guys, if you are watching this video and you don't follow these fancasters on Instagram, what are you doing? These guys are amazing. They produce great content. Some of these guys write stories. Some of these guys write their own film scripts and they put it on Instagram so you can check it out and you can say, wow, that would have been, that'd be really sweet if we got a movie like that. Or if, or if they do the edits, you know, they're fan casting all day long. These guys put out some great, great content. They go live. I love to see these guys. You guys should check them out. Support your local fan casters. <laughs> support your, your fan casters from across the globe and support the guys that are out here on YouTube that are trying to make it out here like Nerdy Blurb TV, myself, the stuff of legend. 
Um, we all participated in this event. And if you want to participate in the next collaboration event, email me at the stuff of legend show at gmail.com. That's how you do it. Just request Just say, Hey, I'm a fan caster on either YouTube or Instagram. Put your handle, put your image, you know, like send me a copy of your image or something like that. And then just say, I want to request participation to the fan casting summit and I will get back to you in the email. I always answer my emails. So you guys, let me know if you wanna do that. Thank you so much for supporting this video. Thank you for supporting the channel. Support these guys here. Check them out if you guys like fan casting, if you're into that. We do that a lot here on the channel and we do that on Instagram with these guys in collaboration. So thank you guys for being part of the biggest fan casting event of all time. You guys rock, and I hope that you guys enjoy more of this content. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being a part of this fan casting summit. I can't thank you guys enough, and thank you to everyone who participated. You guys rock super hard. Again, if you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button. Also, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way, you guys won't miss a single thing, and you guys can be part of the next premiere, the next live event. That way, you can be part of the stuff of legend. Legend. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.